all make choices. But in the end, our choices make us. So choose wisely. Subscribe to It's Eric Nagel wherever podcasts are found. And leave a positive review. Won't you kindly? Did you guys see that video of the seal attacking the kayaker with an octopus? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, that was like the best video ever. No, best. I haven't. Dude, the guy's like in a kayak and a seal just pops its head out and has an octopus in his mouth and just whips the dude across the face with it and it swims <laughs> back on the Dude, it's the funniest fucking thing. The, and the guys in the boat's like, did I just get hit with an octopus? Uh, it's like when Monty brings his toy rope thing and he doesn't yeah. want to tug of war, he just whips you with it. Yeah, but it's just so weird because it's like a seal. Why would a seal use an octopus as a weapon? Like, that's just, I mean, that's evolution, I guess. Well, like, this is what the seal wars are going to be. Like, we have nuclear bombs. They got octopi. Yeah, you don't know what's going on below the ocean there. <laughs> Never. I'm they not have, going down there. Do you realize what this is right now, right? This is a pitch meeting for the next sci-fi movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. seal the puss. It's Eric Nagel. And it starts now. What up, my Nagel? What up, my Nagel? What up, my Nagel? What up, my Nagel? What up, my my, my Nagel talking about George R. R. Martin, not writing. Talking Marvel versus DC, who's more exciting? Talking George Lucas's legacy, high score and centipede. Talking Giddles new beef burrito recipe. Talking about Stephanie McMahon versus Sable. Talking about the Cybermen versus the Weeping Angels. Don't blink. The dialect's more deadly than you think. Talking Summer L, blueberry pale, craft beer, foreign drinks. What up, my Nagel? Deadpool 2 features cable. Talking Funko Pop, celebrity sign the label. Talking online. Gaming, bitching and complaining, talking E Rock, kissing the feet of Matt Brainin, Warner Brothers properties, Superman's a mockery, Weird Al Conscious, Kevin Smith's debauchery, Rick and Morty Fun Zone, The Lego Build Team, can I have your attention? Possible Donkey Kong Kill Screen, what up, my Nagel? What up, my Nagel? What up, my Nagel? What up, my, my, my Nagel? Ladies and gentlemen of the universe. The next voice you hear, Eric Nagel. Hello, welcome to oh. another edition. Oh. <laughs> Good job, Gittles. <laughs> welcome to perfect way to start a brand new episode of It's Eric Nagel. That's me, and uh, apparently it's our um, it's our weekend that we're allowed to have rights to take care of Matt OG this week, so he's here with us. Yay. He's over in the upside down, sitting next to Gittles. It was a joke, Gittles. No, he's, <laughs> he's freaking around. He's freaking like, what? Where? What? Gittles really is over there. me for a second there. And uh, Trev's and Devs is back here. Hooray. Wearing fan-related clothing. I have a shirt with my name on it. Yes. Somebody it sent does. in a shirt it for him. It fits very well, and it's slimming. I didn't quite know if it was a shirt saying that uh, Trevor is endearing or that they wanted to light him on fire. Either way, I'm happy with the result. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that they want to light me on fire. I, I'm yeah. actually, I should be worried, but at the same time, I'm really happy the shirt fits. I mean, I don't <laughs> light you on fire. Does that, does that come for anything or? Hey. <laughs> you light my heart on fire, Trevor. Hey, oh. That might be a medical thing. You might want to get that checked out. Are you drinking a rose? Yes. Angry I Orchard, hard cider rose. I got these free from work because we did an Angry Orchard rose slash uh, vanilla creamsicle. It was really that good. Amazing. That does yeah, sound it was really alcoholic. Good. It was 21 plus. You can only be 21 plus to get it because it was. Well, luckily, I'm at least 21. Yeah. I mean, when we were making it, I almost passed out from the fumes. I was like, you know what? I don't think we should be boiling this much alcohol. So I'm getting woozy. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. The whole area around the, your place of uh, business started to look like the scenery in the mask when they'd oh. show the town. <laughs> Just yeah. green and pink and purple methane everywhere. Everywhere. Oh, great. Anyway, welcome to the program. 651 Smithers is the phone number. 651 764 8437 if you want to call and be a part of the program. Lots to get to this week because next week is one of the staples of this program and a staple of the of the Big Kev's Geek Stuff program. New York Comic Con, once again, 2018 at the Jacob Javits Center in Manhattan. Uh, our show will be there. The Big Kev show will be there. They've got their booth. Did you get your number yet? Yes, so we actually finally got it confirmed last night. We are booth 1172. And that is that the great location that uh, Kevin was at last year? No, it's um, it's actually a little bit 
It's like a row or two over from where we were last year. That's still a great location. Yeah, it's close to that back wall, which if, if our friends at Spitfire are in the same spot that they've been for the past couple of years, it's nearest to Spitfire. It's not far from Marvel. Um, it's sort of on the outskirts of the block. That's uh, actually a really good spot because it's not too crowded right in front of it, so people can like kind of pass through there. Because I know like when I have to go a buy route, I walk down that way because it's a little easier to get through. Yep. And uh, so, yeah. That's a good spot. I'm I'm pretty happy. Uh, I'm looking at uh, Matt OG's Instagram, uh, Geek Stuff OG on Instagram. If you want to check it out, he posted the location, uh, sort of the mini map of where the booth is going to be located. Yeah, you're yeah. one you're one row over from where Kevin was last year, and right. you're right near the Marvel Pavilion, which is uh, going to get a lot of traffic. And the the spot that you're at gets a lot of foot traffic passing by, not like a Hovering. like a traffic jam right in front of your table. It's really the area for small press. It's kind of like the small press, independent press area right. is where we are. Um, it's a good spot. It's a good spot. So I'm do we do we uh, think this spot is still better than uh, being across from the women's room? No, that'll be the best spot ever. <laughs> it's like well, on one side you had Jason Frank, whatever his name is, over at Toy Tokyo, Green Ranger, the Green Ranger, and then right in front of you you had the women's restroom. So. Mm-hmm. But I'm excited to be near Marvel because two of our raffle items this year are our hot Marvel items that I think will do quite well. So Ooh, what do you have? Too. We have a we have a, a new Captain America shield this Ooh. year. Oh uh, yeah, the shield last. Well, you had one. Is this the third year I'm, you're having it? The third year that yeah. we have the shield. It's and these very well are, made. They're like aluminum shields with real leather straps on the back. Um, they're they're really really nice. They're handmade by a friend of ours. Um, they're beautiful. And then we also have that huge, giant um, Infinity Gauntlet. Oh, nice. That Hasbro put out, the one that's fully articulated and lights up and shit. So raffling off one of those. Oh, that's- man. I tried to. Amazon. So The what? It just arrived at my house yesterday from Amazon. I so. tried to get that at Toys R Us before Toys R Us shut down. Um, right. I was there once and I saw it because it was like 100 bucks, right? Yep. And I was like, you know what? I got to do some other things. I'll come back tomorrow. Hopefully, it's still there because they had they had one glove and they had uh, the Star Lord helmets uh-huh. and one other particular item I can't re- uh, recall. I was like, I'll come back, and it was gone the next day. Sounds about right. Sounds about right. I went to three or four other Star uh, Toys R Us, and they didn't have it. I'm gonna have to uh, you know buckle down and just get it off Amazon. Yeah, that's right. Like I said, I, I bought it off Amazon for the raffle. So uh, so we'll have those two things. There might be a third item as well. We're still working that out. But those two things are confirmed. So Now, awesome. al- also at your booth, you usually have um, your artist friends that down there so, either contributing work or doing signings or sketches or something like that. So we've cut back significantly on our exclusives this year. We have one exclusive that is it's the first time ever that we have an exclusive that is show related. So it's really truly for Geek Stuff fans. Okay. And we haven't fully announced it yet, so I'm not gonna do it here. Um, I'll probably announce it Monday of next week. Um, but we'll have we'll have that exclusive at the booth this year. We're gonna have an artist at the booth on Thursday for a couple hours in the afternoon doing sketches for people. Um, who's the artist? My friend George Vega. Okay. Um, who's been in our booth before? He's he's sketched for us before at the booth, so that's always a good time. You know, we normally get a good line of people lining up to get some stuff from him. Um, I think we're gonna have another. We're gonna have an art print from our friend Caesar from Victorian Inc. The tattoo have, uh, in Elizabeth. You uh, you gave me one of his uh, one of his Rick art pieces, the Rick and Morty artwork. Yeah, I have it over there. Yeah. Last year he did a Gravity Falls print for yep. us. And this year, um, well, we haven't announced it yet, so I'm going to hold on to it. I'll probably announce everything at the same time on Monday. Is he tracing his hand and making a turkey? He he is. That's exactly what it is. That's Spoilers. Exactly it is. So uh, so yeah. So New York Comic Con should be a good time. I read an article today that they're they're anticipating um, two hundred and fifty thousand plus people. Well, that's what, they, that's what they did the last couple of years, right? Wasn't it like two years ago the first time they beat San Diego Comic Con? Correct, correct. Um, and they're they're sort of maxed out for at least another few years until the Javits Center finishes finishes its um, construction. Oh, that's still going on. All right, uh, but they're also doing more stuff satellite. 
So they're starting to they're starting to do stuff like San Diego does. Yeah, they where there's more stuff off site. They they started that a couple of years ago where they started doing some events at the the Hammerstein Ballroom. Uh, they have some events there. I know one or two of the events that we've been invited to are are, are there. Uh, there was talk about something doing at the Hard Rock last year, but that huh. never came to fruition, and I, I didn't see anything at the Hard Rock this year on the schedule. That's far in comparison. You know, I could see a bang at Hammerstein. You can walk there. Yeah, it's not that far though. There, there are other, there are a couple of other locations that are kind of close to the Javits Center. But that whole area of New York, if you're not familiar, that whole area of New York has been under massive construction for forever yeah. years now. Mm-hmm. Right? They, they tore down a bunch of buildings. They raised a bunch of lots. They're putting up all sorts of new high rises and new uh, office buildings. And uh, there's a couple of new. Um, like smaller venues going up in that area. So I, I think in another three or four years, it'll make a pretty significant difference. We're still just kind of going through the growing pains of that. Right. Yeah. The only I know other- like personally, like one of my favorite things about Comic-Con is like walking to the Javits Center and being like, oh, I haven't seen this since last year. Where did all these buildings come from? Where did this subway terminal come from? Like, yeah, it's, exactly. like it's really building up around that area there. And I'm sure like, Eventually, the Javits Center is just going to make a, an entire Comic Con center and be like, "This is it." It's just going to be like an amusement park at some point, you know. Just, <laughs> it's getting there. It's I mean, getting- it's getting there. Like, why not just make cons like comic book or um, amusement parks? <laughs> um, the only other thing that I have going on for New York Comic Con is Friday night. Um, we're having an informal sort of, um, you know, like fan hangout get together. Um, I think we're going over to the New York Brewing Company, although we haven't settled on that exact location yet. But it's going to be for just fans um, to just go and hang out and have some food and have some drinks and chill. I know a bunch of our patrons are planning on being there, but it's open to all fans that just want to come and hang out. I'd I'd extend that to all the, uh, the it's Eric Nagel people as well. If you guys want to come and hang out, we'll be there. Well, Friday night we'll have definitive details probably Thursday, so we'll put them on social media as well as we'll have info at the booth. All right, so uh, look for uh, Geek Stuff OG on social media for those updates, and whatever Matt posts, uh, we'll retweet it for the It's Eric Nagel account. If you want to come over and maybe, you know, look, I, I think our last thing on Friday is... I mean, I'm down. I got no plans for Friday. I was hanging out. Hopefully, you know, uh, Brian Shea will be wanting to hang out. We can chill with him for a bit. Oh, word. I think our last, thing, be in town. I think our last thing ends at, like... 5 five thirty. well this would uh, the, the fan the the fan get together is happening after hours right because we're gonna we're locked we're at the con until the con ends right which closes oh. at seven right and so we'll probably look 637 ish yeah we'll probably look to be at the restaurants well the bar by seven thirty eight o'clock i would think yeah so. that's fine yeah all right that, that, cool. that will be fun to do uh, to go and yeah. hang out and i haven't seen kev since he left so it'd be nice to yeah, see him yeah, town in a couple days so yeah it'll be a good time uh get i haven't since sorry go ahead since we lost since we lost matt uh in the in the breakup uh, i haven't seen him so we have to i have to see him right (laughs) um giddles had mentioned our pal brian shea from game informer he will be in town he will be doing new york comic-con thursday and friday i believe um as far as being on the floor so i know we're going to get some time with him for the uh on the show we'll hang out with him see what's going on with all of that fun stuff I actually can't wait to talk to him about Red Dead with the news that came out today about how large this thing is going to be. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into uh, Red Dead in, in the second segment there because, uh, yeah, I, I have some concerns about it. But look, I'm buying a, hard, a physical copy, so I'm not wor- <laughs> too worried about it. There's a lot of video game news, too. Yeah. So All cross-platform play is coming out now. It's we'll, going to be crazy. We'll get to that a little bit later. Uh, Matt, uh, New York Comic Con highlights. Anything that you care to discuss, share with the audience? Um. No, I mean, there's. it sounds like there's going to be a lot of good panels. Um, so I, I treat New York Comic Con the same way I treat San Diego Comic Con, where I really don't go to any panels. Yeah. Uh, that said, I, I'm going to try to go to um, the Critical Role panel, which I think is Thursday. I'm not going to the live show, but I'm going to try to go to the panel. Um, but I'm, I'm interested to see what kind of um, I'm interested to see what kind of news comes out of the con. I think we'll we'll hear some good stuff. Um, yo, I should fun. tweet at Matt Mercer and be like, yo, can we interview. Like, he seems pretty cool. He he does seem pretty chill. So they like, all, I bet they're all, they're all gonna be there. The entire cast is gonna be there. And they're all they're voices doing- of Overwatch characters too. Like, this could be the greatest crossover ever. Good. 
they're doing a um, because they're doing a live episode of Critical Role Thursday night. Mm. So, um, from uh, from an offsite location, um, but uh, yeah, so the entire cast is going to be everybody but Ashley Johnson. Yeah, Johnson's always busy. Gittles, but, if you want to reach out, go ahead, go blast yeah, going online to. and see if uh, we can set up some time with them. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I want to be like, it's high noon, and, and he shoots me. <laughs> <laughs> they all seem really. They all seem like really nice people. So yeah, um, that's fine. So, no, I don't know. Um, you know, I, I get booth locked a lot, so I'm looking. I'm just looking to take in the experience. I'm looking to be social, hang out with people. I think it'll be fun. Uh, do you want me to run down some of the stuff that for for this show that uh, we potentially have lined up here for, for uh, interviews and whatnot? Yeah, of course. Um, it looks like well, I'll, I'll start with one of the biggest ones. It looks like we are confirmed for the cast of Daredevil. Sweet season three, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit more later in in TV stuff. But season three, uh, sort of the announcement just sort of snuck up on everybody. Um, the artwork looked great. It, you know, it's a cross with the with the Daredevil mask, helmet, skull cap kind of thing hanging off one of the uh, the arms of the cross. There, everything is in a like a blinding blood red kind of uh, layout and uh, they announced that Daredevil season three is coming to Netflix on October 19th. Uh, I I know Iron Fist season two just came out recently, which I have not seen at all. I don't know if I'm going to. I might just because I've watched everything else, but I really my friends like liked it a lot. I have some friends who, yeah, they said it was pretty good. They said it fixed a lot of the wrongs from the first season and it was like a little better. Good. So because the first season was eh, the defenders wasn't much better. And I like defenders. I did. I I told Matt this. I did like how Daniel was uh, remodeled for Luke Cage season two. So it was a precursor, I guess, to you know the season two release of, of Iron Fist. So I like what they were doing with him in, in Luke Cage season two. So maybe I should give that a chance and uh, and watch that. I have to catch up on Daredevil, so I'm not going in blind. You should. Oh. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Knock that one out of the park. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> there was ever a time for the air horn, that was it. World star. The, the, the kid walk around like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> we should recreate that in the crowd of, on the yeah. floor count. And then just Trevor kind of goes, ah. <laughs> you know, it's someone just pushing his face out of the way. <laughs> uh, what else do we have? So it looks like also <laughs> this one's going to be tricky. The cast of Doctor Who. Whom? Right. The thirteenth Doctor, and I think one or two, I think one companion, and the showrunner. Mm. So a doctor, an assistant, and a nurse. Yes. Uh, yes. For the thirteenth uh, Doctor, nurse. Matt's favorite actress, Jodie Whittaker, is playing the thirteenth Doctor. And That's a- here's also some weird. So Sunday of New York Comic Con, uh, New York Comic Con, October seventh is also when the BBC is going to globally premiere the brand uh, the first episode of the new season of the 13th Doctor. So right. it's going to be prime time in London, but it'll be whatever time it is that equ- you know that equates to where you live. And I, I, if I remember correctly, when they did this 5 years ago for the uh, for that movie the the day of the doctor uh huh. That I had to watch it. It was like one forty-five in the afternoon on a Saturday or something like that. That's bizarre. So it, that it was probably going to be that way on Sunday. So if you're at New York Comic Con and you're looking forward to the premiere of Doctor Who, the brand new season, might as well set your DVR because you're not going to be home for it. That's right. Because it's not going to be eight o'clock, and they're moving it to Sundays, which is weird because it usually was a Saturday night show. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Whatever they, whatever they want to do. This is a five-hour difference, I think. Yes, five hours. But they don't start on the on the hour or on the half hour. They're usually like oh five, oh seven. Yeah, they're they're not governed by commercials and shit. The no, same cause, move. Yeah, because they'll have Silly commercials bricks. from the last thing run run till whenever. Then the show will start, but then you'll get like a twenty twenty five minute straight shot of the show. Right. Which is which kind of wish what they would do here. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice to have that as a like a thing. Uh, we are going to <laughs> talk with our old friends, the Impractical Jokers. Yay! Nice. They got some stuff going on. We can talk to them. Uh, John Glazer, 
I think we talked to him once before for that werewolf show he was doing on Adult Swim. Yeah, it was like that um, neon werewolf, something Joe neon like neon Joe like werewolf hunter or something like yeah. that. It was like an Adult Swim show. Uh, you may know him from Parks and Recreation. He's got another thing going on with Turner, so we're going to talk to them. He was also on Delocated and Wonder Shows. Matt, this one is probably going to be a majority of you because I'm going to try to do a crash course this week. Excuse me for uh, American Gods on Stars. Nice, so very cool. That's going to be on Friday, so we'll have uh, the majority of the cast will be on on uh, on hand to talk to. So we'll do that. Our buddy Rob Paulson reached out and asked oh, if nice. we were going to be there. So we're going to do a little impromptu thing with him in between Yay. stuff that he's got going on. He just wants to shoot the shit and and catch up and nothing formal. Just come on, come on and say hello. That's pretty good. Uh, another Marvel property, The Runaways, invited us to come talk to them. Is anybody watching that show? Uh, I started season one, but I did not finish it. All right. I haven't I, missed a commercial for it. I have watched The Gifted, but I have I don't think I've watched The Runaways, so I'll have to catch up on that. Also, DreamWorks had reached out. Uh, they have a handful of properties that we have been invited to. So we have uh, our friends over at Voltron. We can go talk to them again. Sweet. Uh, I'm like... The, seasons behind on Voltron. You gotta catch up. It's really good. It's not like me telling you you have to watch the finish the end of Luke Cage season two. Voltron has gotten really good. Um, we're gonna talk to the cast of the new Shira reimagining okay. um, Yay. for DreamWorks and all that. And then also a, pro, a project called Ar Arcadia Three Below, where we're gonna speak to Guillermo del Toro. Ooh, Guillermo! Very very excited for that. I am. Um, that he he was on once with, I don't know if it was Opie and Anthony or Opie and Jimmy, but he yeah. was awesome. We talked I've Pacific Rim. Times. He's a nice dude. Yeah, was it? He was on that episode of Sunny, right? He was the Royal McPoyle. He was like the Grandpa McPoyle. Was he? I'm fairly certain. When they go to court and Charlie's ar ar arguing bird law, mm. like I'm I'm gonna Google this right now. But All we right, can please keep talking do that. Do this. Um, a little side note, so season 13 of Always Sunny just started uh, a few weeks ago. I happened to catch a new episode last night, and it was, the, the, you'd think the show would run out of ideas, and they just keep coming up with great ideas. So remember the episode a while back where they did the, Wade's, uh, the Wade Boggs challenge? Yep. Where they're all wearing white shirts, they go on a plane, and they were trying to outdrink his uh, alleged uh, record. And they'd have to mark it on their shirt, and the, you know, to see who could beat the Wade Boggs record. So they did an all-female one, right? So D takes the waitress, um, her her weird, you know, spiritual friend, the mom's uh, Charlie's mom, and, and Artemis. Uh, uh, Artemis, yes, uh, takes Char character. Charlie's mom and Max mom, and they all go on a plane where the plane is entirely women going to L.A. for a women's march. So yeah, I thought I heard the episode was called "The Gang Gets Times Ups" or something like that. No, that's a that's a different episode. Oh, okay. This one, they all get on the plane, and Dee purposely books it because she knows that it's all going to be all women, and it's empowering women. Gets everybody on the plane, and says she doesn't give a shit about empowering women. We're going to do the female version of the Wade Boggs challenge, and her friend is saying, "Well, why don't we just do something different? You know, if it's going to be about female, why don't we come up with our own thing?" She goes, "Why come up with your own thing? Just just do what the guys did and have a female do it, and it's completely different. So it's just it, it's like shitting all over the women's movement, what's been going on, and sort of embracing it at the same time. Because eventually, there's other women on the plane wearing those pink caps, and they're just downing bottles of rose. Like it's a whole mess, and it turns Are you into a to real say some drinking rose. Yes, well, you know, try to tie everything in. Uh, but the new season of, uh, of Always Sunny in Philadelphia, season 13, is actually really, really good. So Yes, and Guillermo del Toro was on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I had he no played a McPoyle. All right, we'll have to talk to him about that then. Oh, my God, we are. Yes. <laughs> uh, what else do we have here? We've been invited to talk to the cast of Cobra Kai on oh, YouTube. Cool. Yes. Gittles is doing I'm going to fucking kick. walk inside an interview doing the crane kick and just challenge everyone. I hope they throw you out immediately. I'm going to try and do the crane kick. I'm going to miss, like, hit someone in the shin barely and then just roll around like a soccer player, like, waiting for a red card. Like, ah! I'm uh, going to get kicked by Gittles. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, we have that going on. Uh, we're going to go talk to the cast of The Tick again, which is going to be a lot of fun. This Yay. time with uh, our brand new 
friend. Uh, well, we've only talked to him online. Apparently, he knows us. And, Sounds uh, kind of rapey. He knows Matt pretty well and, and the Geek Stuff program. But uh, Griffin Newman. Yeah, and he's friends he, with Christy. Yes. So uh, I wrote to him for a little bit, and he goes, yeah, here's the contact. And he goes, wait, let me do, let me do something. And all of a sudden, they got my information, and now we're going to be there to talk Woo-hoo. to everybody from Amazon's The Tick, which I really I love that inter- show. I love Peter Serafanowicz, and I really just want to like talk to him about all of his roles and be like, yeah, fucking Black Books, Spaced, John <laughs> Wick. <laughs> like He was in everything good. Right. Yeah. Totally good. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Uh, a couple other little wait, things here that wait, we don't need to get yeah. into. More things are coming in. Uh, we have some parties to go to, some demonstrations to go to. There's. I heard we, we were like, weren't we getting Cosmos on Sunday? Was that is that uh, confirmed or no? Um, not. I think we are. I'm still waiting on that information. Uh, I'm not seeing it on my list. Here. I know I talked to them. We were supposed to have Neil deGrasse Tyson. I think we're still doing that, but I'll, I'll follow up again just to make sure. Uh, Funny we, thing, Neil deGrasse Tyson autocorrects on my phone to Neil deGrease Tyson, <laughs> which I thought was kind of funny. <laughs> um, there, I saw a clip. I guess it's a, a newer episode of um, of uh, Big Bang Theory, but sure. Neil deGrasse Tyson was on there having an uh, a text argument or Twitter argument with. Uh, uh, Resh or whatever the the Indian oh, kid's name, yeah, yeah uh, Raj, and he he confronts him, he calls him on the phone, and Raj totally backs down, and then it, it just cuts back to Neil deGrasse Tyson sitting in his office at the at the planetarium here in New York, and he sits there for a m- moment, and then he looks at his phone and goes, "All right, who else needs a nu- who else needs a good deGrasse kicking?" And he <laughs> he calls, he picks up the phone, and it's Bill Nye, the science guy. That's and he pretty. goes, Bill, Neil Tyson, and Bill just slams the phone down. <laughs> it was actually pretty, pretty good. Uh, I think that's it for. Oh, and Funko, Matt. First right. thing th- on Thursday, we have Funko. I'm down. So we're gonna go over there and enjoy all the Funko g- uh, goodness that we can uh, get our hands on. Sweet. I think that's about it. So, uh, so as a, as a first timer that I'm going. Um, I should bring money. I'm guessing there's a few things that I might want to get. Yeah. Now, like when you get the press pass, they just give you everything. No. Oh, awesome. No. 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 Don't trust him. No. no. Do you guys Man, have? Your, we were going to tell him I... you get one of those big bags and you just go. It's like trick or treating. You go up to the booths. And you say, "I'm with the press." And they give you free things. Who pees in his food before a throwdown? It's Trevor's not. gonna like show up there like like Jim Carrey and Dumb and Dumber. Be like, it's okay. I'm a, I'm on the press pass, and then we just see him fall off the thing. Like that's gonna be him trying to get free stuff. I got a press pass, but <laughs> if you go up to a booth with a press pass, they will give you free shit. Some booths may, yes, but don't just, it, like, they'll usually be like, as long as you put it in your bag and I don't see it, you can have it. That's I'm usually the way. It goes. Kicked <laughs> out of Matt, so I'm just gonna keep walking up with a press pass. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, just tell them E-Rock sent you, that's all. Yeah, and then right. ask for Gittles. Yes. Well, funny story, uh, I started working on my costume. Okay. Are we I, are we all dressing up, or is it just me? Yeah, oh, we're, we're all dressing up. up. All dressing up. Yep. All right, because I started growing my beard. I'm going I'm gonna go as E-Rock. Oh. Okay. <laughs> all right, I'm hoping that's going to give me... Uh, Holy wh- shit, I see it. Do you, I know. Do you see how many... I want people to take pictures with me. I'm going to sign a whole bunch of things. I've been working on a signature like crazy. Very oh exciting. my god, if I cross my eyes, it's like I'm seeing double. Four crusties. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to get myself thrown out of Comic-Con. How do we do this? Apparently, if you go to um, the Geek Stuff booth and ask for Gittles, you'll start a fight or a riot, so that'll probably get you kicked out. Yeah, you'll out. get thrown out then. It's entirely possible. Uh, I'm not going to lie. a skunk attacking Matt? Can yeah. we just talk about the skunk that's attacking Matt quick? My cat. It's oh, my- it's a cat tail. Yes. Um, Sorry. I, I want to point out that we've overlooked the fact that Matt just said that you're going to take advice from the guy who pees in his food before a takedown. What is it's that true. about? <laughs> oh, I thought that was normal. <laughs> the special ingredient. That is. is where, where did that come from? I don't know. I posted something on Twitter and I was like, I was like, Brett Kavanaugh is unhinged. And someone's like, unhinged. What if someone just started bad lies about you and said you pee in all the food at vegan takedowns? I'm like, I, I don't even know who you are, sir. And I was like, that's exactly what I do. The Come on, get off my Twitter again. MSG, which stands for Ms. Giddles. It's just her pee. Uh, <laughs> There's none. 
There's no Ms. Giddles. I don't think there's anything else as far as New York Comic Con that we haven't told you already. I think that's about it. So if, if you're going to go out to New York Comic Con, uh, hit us all up on social media. Let us know if you want to come by, say hi, go by the Geek Stuff booth. What's the number again, Matt? 1172. I go it was by the Geek Stuff booth. Uh, go Same see. combination as my luggage. Yeah, we'll point out some. Uh, if you're like Trevor, you're new to New York Comic Con. Or if you've been to Comic-Con several times and you want to know some booths to go to that are pretty cool, we'll put some stuff out there. Our friends at Spitfire Labs that do the the wood-ingrained Nintendo controllers and the artwork, it's definitely a, a, a one of the places you, you should put on your list there. And stuff goes fast. If you like the stuff that we've been showing you on social media over time, uh, when they have new products, it goes very fast. So if you get there in the morning, that should be one of the booths you hit first before you go exploring. Also, if you're looking for collectibles, too, like exclusives only to oh. New York Comic Con, um, try to map everything out first. Know which booth numbers that you need to go to get the collectibles before the rest of the crowd gets in there because then you sometimes you might be, you know, SOL, and then you're complaining that uh, they didn't have enough. Right. Yeah, I mean, if, there are, if there's an exclusive that you want, you should prioritize those things because yeah. that stuff tends to sell out quick. Did you see uh, any of the exclusives for Funko this year? Um, I saw a few. I saw the the two from Harry Potter. Both were pretty cool. I guess you want those. I do want those. Um, There's an Overwatch ex- uh, exclusive, Gittles. Oh, what is it? It's a glow-in-the-dark uh, uh, Rammstein without his helmet. Uskin? Rammstein? Rammstein? What? That's the, not a character in the game. So I just, like, I, I, the big German guy. Reinhardt? Reinhardt. I, ca- I keep calling them Rammstein. Oh, Jesus, yeah. dude. Uh, it's yeah. not, even, not even close to correct. Cue the I mean, music. Du hast. Du hast nicht. Ugh. We um, all live in America. I love yo, that band. I don't know that, that one. that song, man. I had a band. Oh, that's actually kind of cool. Yeah. That is cool. Yeah. I had a band, and we were going to have the theme song to Ugly Americans, and then they gave it to Rammstein at, a loss, at the last second for that song because it had the word America in it, and I'll never... Like let fucking Ramstein down for that. <laughs> Coca Cola. Uh, some of the Bastards. big, some of the other Funko stuff. They have uh, the Gear Robot from Rick and Morty. The Gear Wars. Yeah. <gasps> He's the, I need the Gear Wars robot. Yeah. So I want to get that. They have. I heard uh, there's a Married with Children exclusive that my friend was telling me about. Yes. I a, haven't seen it. Remember the Golden Girls four set? Oh, they yeah. have it there for Married with Children as well. Oh so. man, look at David Faustino. I know. Yep. <laughs> oh, they all rocking it. He's probably working there making these things. Yeah, probably. He needs um, to- <laughs> uh, Matt, Married there's, debt. there's a, uh, I know because of your Spider Man collection, there's an exclusive uh, Carnage Funko. I saw, yeah, yeah, he looks cool. So you, yeah, he does look cool. Uh, I want to pick up uh, some of the gold Marvel pops that they have there. Uh, there's the Notorious B.I.G. one where he's wearing the crown. That one's kind of cool. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> and uh, I guess I there's some other one. I have to see what else there there's available there. But oh, uh, bring a bag. I definitely want to get some of those and all other fun stuff. So if you're going out to New York Comic Con, let us know, and uh, we'll have a we'll have a good old time. Moving on. Uh, so over the weekend, somebody wrote on Twitter that. She she was asking a question. She said, "Is it is it a good idea to bring a seventeen year old to a vineyard for a birthday party?" And I responded, "It's about as responsible as bringing a ch- you know a child to a brewery." And this seems to have set off a sh- uh, shitstorm. Well, I mean, considering I've brought in a child, brought in is brought in a real word. No, I got that wrong this week. Considering I've I brought, brought brought my child to both a vineyard and a brewery. Uh-huh. At the same time, I, I I feel as though I can speak on this. Uh, Please do. Yeah, what, there's nothing wrong with it. What's wrong with it? I don't know. I had last time I was at uh, Zeppelin Hall, which is yeah. in Jersey City, and uh-huh. I I like that place a lot. But last time I was there, there were a lot of kids there. Yeah, and I it kind of drove me nuts. Zeppelin Hall isn't a bar though. Zeppelin Hall is a restaurant. There's a restaurant attached to it. I didn't know. No, I never been in the restaurant. 
The restaurant is in the middle. They serve those giant pretzels the size of my son. No, but breweries sell those things. I didn't. Some do. Yeah. No, no, no. They sell. They sell all sorts of German food, all sorts of brats and 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 um, and uh, all. They sell. They you could get big, huge. I go there. I've gone there for dinner. I'm just more shocked that Eric was at a place that had giant pretzels and didn't know they had giant pretzels. No, I knew they had giant pretzels. I used to get that. I used to get yeah because they have food. Certain like beer gardens and breweries allow can have families there and and if they're serving food if they're not serving food you can't have children at those places i learned that mm. after the fact no that is true that's a law so i went some there and there was just too many there was no, too many so because at demented i've been to demented twice right both times there were kids there yeah and they do underage music shows at the brewery near me I don't know. I I saw I read up that where it said that as long as they're serving food, it can be open to everybody. If they're not serving food, that it's considered a bar, and uh, you know, twenty one and up can't be considered a bar if they don't have a liquor license. They and, have and to have vineyard, a liquor license. No vineyards no. have all sorts of vineyards. Always have all sorts of events that are that are family friendly. And breweries don't have liquor license. That's the whole reason why New Jersey's about to lose its mind. I don't yeah. go to vineyards, so I, I don't know. Oh, you're here's, a classy son of a bitch. I'm surprised. Well, here, here's my thing with, like, the kids and stuff. Like, if it's at a brewery, lots of breweries have, like, family day and stuff like that. And, like, I don't get as annoyed. Like, when I go to a bar in my neighborhood and someone is having a 10-year-old's birthday party there, that makes me upset. Because okay. now I'm at a bar and someone's having a 10-year-old's birthday party there. Like, what oh, the fuck? What, like, What time of day? Like, around 7? <laughs> Okay. Like yeah. between six and seven, like going into evening time. If it's so, like two in the afternoon and you're just day drinking, like whatever. But for example, the bar, the bar that I used to go to locally, that I still go to actually once in a while, which is it's over in Clifton, New Jersey. I mean, it's a bar, but they have a little area on the side that's for food, and you know, you could take your kids there and like go and eat dinner. Yeah. And I've had I've seen kids have birthdays there, but like in the afternoon. Not at night. Yeah. Now, like, I've seen, now, I have seen some places where after a certain time, they no longer around, allow children. So, like, after 8 o'clock, no children allowed. Or after 10 o'clock, no children. Like, I've seen that, and that makes sense. Yeah. But if you're there in the afternoon, as long as it's a place that allows them to be there, I see no reason why you couldn't bring them there. Yeah, I guess, I guess my whole thing is, like, if you're going to have kids there, like, just watch them. Because, like, the problem I have is that a lot of – Young parents in Brooklyn are very free range parents where it's just like, oh, my kid's just doing his thing. And then I'm fucking stepping on them and knocking them over trying to get a beer. And then I'm the bad guy if I knock over the child in the bar that shouldn't be in a bar. But but that the problem, the problem with that, Gittles, is that you can really remove the bar from that equation. That's just irresponsible parenting. That's the same parent. That's the same parent who when I was in Target two weeks ago. Right. Yeah. Kid had to be six, maybe seven years old. And she's like, oh, just hang out over in the toy aisle for a little bit. I'm going to go shopping. Yeah. That's how kids get stolen. Yeah. Or or, or, or break shit. Or, yeah. or or allows Gittles to kick them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's I mean, that's just irresponsible, irresponsible parenting. But if those types of establishments don't have a problem with it, then I, I, I don't see there's anything wrong with it. Now, granted, my son at his age, he's been to, like I said, he's been to a, a vineyard before. Um, he, but he's also been to like the tattoo parlor, like frequently since yeah. he's been bored. Like, but I don't know. It's, but I'm a responsible parent. And so far as I kind of, um, keep an eye on him. Yeah. I keep an eye on him and I parent. Yeah. You know I mean? My, 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 my wife just messaged me because she could hear us talking and she said one of her very good friends brings her two-year-old to the local brewery that they go to almost every single weekend. And there are other families there that do the same thing. So as long as the establishment is okay with it, I don't see, I don't think it's being an irresponsible parent simply bringing them there. Now, 
you can bring them there and then be an irresponsible parent. But that's it's not my thing. You brought them there. It's because you're just an irresponsible parent. Irresponsible. Yeah, like that's my thing. It's like you're in, if you if if you bring there and then you're irresponsible, then I'm mad. Like if your kid's under control, like I don't have any issue. But like when they're running around free range and just like zipping through your legs or coming over and taking your Jenga pieces when you're trying, like, no, I have a problem with that. It's well, like, what, get the like, fuck out of here. Let's look at the other side of it, though. What happens if they're sitting there? And, and I really just want to know your answer to this. If they're just sitting there playing Connect Four by themselves and the parents sitting there just ripping shots, like is that still responsible parenting? No. 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 Parents should not be ripping shots <laughs> ever. <laughs> As a matter oh, of fact, I could got to write that down for when I become a parent. No more shots. <laughs> Jager bomb. Jager bombs. I was out in California two years ago now or almost two years ago, visiting my good friends out there, and there's a local uh, vineyard out there. And they have a whole little, like, picnic area in the back with, like, you know, like, shuffleboard and cornhole and all that other stuff. And, you know, there were kids there. So, I mean, I think it depends. Maybe it depends on the establishment, but... Well, in the it all, I mean, it all just depends. Like I said, I, I have a friend, and uh, I remember he was having a birthday party for his one-year-old. And the next day, I was like, oh, man, how'd that birthday party go? I was like, oh... We got we got we got to get a new couch. It got ruined. I was like, oh no! Did one of the kids pee on? He's like, no. It was our fucking friend Katie. She got drunk and fucking pissed the couch before the kids could. And I was like, oh. <laughs> exactly. There are just some people who just shouldn't. Maybe there are some and, people who shouldn't go to vineyard. And for- yeah. what's Katie? What's Katie's number? Just uh, <laughs> oh, it's six one seven Smithers or whatever. What, it is. what about in the sense of where you? All right. So say you can bring your kids there. What if it's a matter of should you bring your kids there? And point being, like, say, uh, you know, last year or w- earlier this year was World Cup stuff, right? So uh-huh. people go out to these uh, these bars, these open air bars or these breweries where they're watching uh, the sporting events and they're having a good time. And during the day, not at night, and people bring their kids there and then they get upset that these people are loud, they're drunk, they're cursing, whatever, while they're watching the sport thing and you have your kid there. Is well, it- that. Again, again, that's not that's just someone who's a bad parent. Then I right. agree. Like, don't bring your kid to some place where you think your kid's going to be uncomfortable or where you're uncomfortable having your kid. If you're going to bring your kid to that type, that's the same parent who brings their kid to see fucking uh, an R rated horror movie. Or yeah, the, the, kid, the parents who bring their kids nuts. to see Deadpool because it's a Marvel movie. Right. I mean, it's, I mean, that's again. But that goes back to because, first of all, as far as anything World Cup related right we're probably the only country in the entire world that doesn't give a shit about it at world cup events drinking right (laughs) i mean because the way that we treat alcohol in our country is is so drastically different than anywhere else in the world but that being said it's just that's being a bad parent yeah if you're gonna bring your kid in your work like don't go to your favorite bar if you know they're gonna be rowdy you go to the b-dubs down the street now in the course of that ongoing twitter conversation Buffalo Wild Wings. BW3 is what it used to be. Wouldn't it be huh. BWW2? No. And we have to go back and fight the Germans for our, the recipe? <laughs> uh, Buffalo Wild Wings used to be called BW3 um, many, many years ago because it, it stood for Buffalo Wild Wings and and WEC. So it had sandwiches on, on WEC rolls, right? So it was called BW3. Then they dropped the WEC part and then made it national and went Buffalo Wild Wings. But it's the same, you know, hipsters that say, oh, I'm going to Target. Then we're going to go to B-dubs. And you're like, I don't want you in my life anymore. I don't want to be friends with you. No, I'm just lazy. I don't want to say an extra word. B-dubs, done. Well, I'm still Ugh. standing by my point that I don't want to be friends with you and I don't want you in my life anymore. I mean, that's, gonna, that's, your, that's your prerogative. Though. I'm going to hug the <laughs> hell out of you next time I see you. Like, oh, um, so anyway, so one guy was saying that they were there, you know, a group of them. They were uh, at, at a brewery. They were having, watching sports and, you know, they were cursing, whatever. And this lady came over and, and yelled at them saying that, you know, my kids are over here. You guys got to stop that. So, like, where, where does it fall then? It's like, do the guys that are there watching an event, having a good time, drinking at a brewery, uh, have to concede to the family that's there? Or does, no. the, or does it go back to um, that it's still bad parenting, you should remove your children from that situation? It, in that circumstance, I would, I would need more information about the event. Okay. So, for if the event, if the brewery, right, was having a family day, all families are welcome to come and watch the game. Right. Right. Okay. Then you should not go there and be 
you can go and drink and get drunken, but you should be at least a little bit mindful of not being a complete sloshed potty mouth. If you know that it's an event that families are invited to. And now if it's just open night at the brewery and the brewery happens to have a, doesn't have a problem with kids being there. Well then no, then, then as a parent, you should know, you know, you should mind that situation. But for example, when I'm at the beach, like I was at the beach a couple of weeks ago, right? And I was on the beach. I had a nice table set up. I was hanging out with my family. A couple of frat boys decided to come over and, and set up shop right next to us. And it was it was F this and F that and my N and all this other stuff. And I had to go over to one of them. And I was like, look, you got a whole big fucking beach here. <laughs> <You see? laughs> yes. Right next to my family. There's four kids here all under the age of like 11 or 12, you know. Shut your fucking mouth. Go someplace else. Like, but right, yeah. that's not so. That's, uh, I mean, I guess every situation could have, you know, variables. But over overall, as a blanket statement, I don't think it's bad to take kids there. So it, you no. got to do it on a case by case basis. Then how you judge these things? It's a parent by parent basis, really. Like depending on who the kids are. Because like, I mean, I would gladly, in some instances, trade one belligerent sports fan drunk for 20 quiet kids any day of the week. You right. know what I mean? Because no, some I of those sports that. fans get so fucking annoying. They're like, oh, my team. They like grab you and shake you like you like you care about sports. And I'm like, just get out of here, buddy. Like, we're all depressed. One well, the other, <laughs> Go ahead, Trevor. The other, thing is, the other thing is, too, it's like, does the business have a problem with it? You know? Like, if it's, if it's a, a bunch of drunk people, or it, say it's like a Thursday at 5 and it's just the, the rowdy people... And the group of kids, but the kids are also rowdy, but the one parent has a problem. I don't know if the parent should necessarily go up to another patron at the other side of the room and be like, hey, you guys got to shut up. I think you should go over maybe to the manager or bartender and be like, you know, this is kind of disturbing to us. And if they see that, like, yeah, you're right, this is messed up, they should go over. I agree with you, right? And then the manager of the bar has one of two options. The manager of the bar can say, all right, I will go talk to them. Or the manager of the bar will say, look. This, this is, is what's happening. This is really not, you know, the atmosphere. I, I that, understand you know. that you have an open policy um, and that your family is welcome here. But at the same time, you have to understand the establishment and what's going on here tonight. And I, you know, it, yeah, do you, you know what I mean? So, but that's the manager's call. You're right. A parent shouldn't necessarily, again, with me on the beach, there was no manager to go up to. But no, no, you're in a public space. That I think you're a 100% in the right. But like at this point, like I think that's just you go over to the people who run the place, and the guy goes, "Hey, you guys, if I know you're in an open bar, but if you quiet down a little bit to make everyone happy, here's some cheese fries, like something like that, just to make everyone happy." Right, right, and and look and. The other thing oh, is, fries. even if my even if my kids weren't in the bar with me, even if I was just at a bar, if there's an idiot in the bar or a group of idiots in the bar yelling and screaming, and you're going to go fight them. Yeah. So I can't have a conversation with the people that I'm with at the bar. or I can't hear the band that's playing or the music. I'm going to be just as pissed off at those people, even if there are no kids around. Matt's going yeah. Matt's going to go all roadhouse on them. That's it. <laughs> roadhouse. I feel like um, like any situation where you're just telling someone else to be quiet in a bar, it just feels like it's going back to high school days with like the jocks and the nerds. It's like, oh, hey, I, can you please stop doing that? Oh, would my my sports stuff too much for you? And he jams you in a locker and gives you yeah. a wedgie. Nerds, throws yeah. an orange in your head. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, one guy also said and goes, "Oh, because I have kids, I'm not allowed to go uh, bring them down and have a few beers because I have kids." And I go. Something feels wrong, but with the way you worded that statement, you know, it's like if you just say you wanted to go have a drink or relax with your, you know, and have your kids there, it was one thing. But when he said, I want to bring my kids and have a few beers, that seems a little like the, like that seemed wrong with what you're saying, you know, because they probably had to drive there, you know, <laughs> I mean, but look, I, I think, I think you have to take some of those things case by case or situation by situation yeah. but overall as a blanket statement i don't think that it's necessarily a bad thing all right last case scenario what if your kids had too much to drink they're being a little rowdy is it responsible to uh, as you being a parent to remove them from the situation so it doesn't ruin everybody else's good time 100 percent, yes well then you take them in the back you give them a good swirly and you beat their ass all right no? If, wait, that, if your kid had too much to drink, did no one else think that was weird? Yeah, no, no, that's, why I just, that's why I went equally ridiculous on the other side. 
Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> you know, they're all trying to do, you know, you got a bunch of seven-year-olds trying to do DOS boot, you know? <laughs> Turn oh, it before the end! Hit the air pocket, hit the air pocket, hit the air pocket! All right, well, enjoy your time at the uh, vineyards and breweries. There's no getting around it, and besides, Zeppelin Hall has some great German food, so... I'll just sit in the well, corner and, and soon you won't have to worry about that New Jersey with the new legislation that's being passed. What ha- what's going on with the New Jersey and the breweries? Uh, I'm going to deflect to my legal consigliere Gittles on this one to go into greater detail. Don't use words you can't spell, Trevor. Yeah. My friend Gittles is going to tell you about it. <laughs> and I'm going to defer this to Matt. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, pretty much more or less, New Jersey is trying to pass legislation that limits what breweries can serve and how they can serve. So a lot of breweries, right, they they operate without a liquor license because they're technically not bars. Yeah. Not restaurants. It's just they're a brewery. tasting room. It's supposed to be a tasting room. So there are all sorts of loopholes. So, for example, if you recall, we've been to a brewery altogether where we were told, well, look, before you can go into the brewery, we've got to take you, you take on. the tour. Yeah. Right. And they it was walked, a great tour. It was well, a good they, tour. They're like, all right, here's the tour. Now you can go drink, right? So what New Jersey is trying to do now is they're trying to say that you can't serve any sort of soda or soft drink or anything that's not alcohol. Yep. Right? You have to serve only alcohol. And that's bad for so many reasons. We'll get to that in a second. Mm -hmm. You're not allowed to keep menus in your establishment for places that will deliver food to you. Which is something like I will talk about later that blows my mind. So you can't do that anymore. And um, I think they're just trying to, in general, limit uh, how much you can sell and when you can sell it and stuff like that. And so really what this is is um, – well, the soda thing and the soft drink thing is a terrible idea and here's why. Let's Maybe. say it's – yeah, well, right. Let's say there's a group of people who want to go to a tasting at a brewery, but you pick you pick a designated driver. Yeah. So, you be able to offer the designated driver something to drink other than water. Yeah. Right. While the other people are there. I mean, that's just to me, that's just being petty and it's short sighted. The food thing. The food thing is weird because I kind of get where they're coming from. I don't agree with it. Let me say that. I don't agree with it, but I get where they're coming from. I think their logic is that it's supposed to be a tasting room. You're supposed to go. Taste, yeah, and leave. Right. By offering food, it now now it it kind of encourages te- technically not offering food. I mean, they're also that's the thing. They're, they're allowing food. They're allowing food in, yeah. but it's weird because how, supports what about, other businesses. Right, but what about vineyards? What about vineyards that do like wine and cheese tastings? Do like wine and cheese tastings? Right, they're exempt from that though. That's a good point. Vineyards have an exemption. This is targeted specifically at breweries. I'm not sure why, but well, here's I, my ta- here's my oh I was I was gonna well, say my take on this is because I read the the article you were talking about, and as I was reading the article, I said, you know what? I guarantee you, by the time I get to the end of this article, it's going to be about restaurants and other bars who are literally just mad at breweries for operating. All right, but so here's the thing. I agree with you. That's 100 percent what it is. Part of me, though, feels sympathetic for those restaurants in New Jersey. So I don't know what it's like where you are, Trevor, but but Iraq can attest to this. I would say 90 percent of the restaurants in our area of New Jersey. Right. Do not serve alcohol. No. And some actually advertise uh, but, B- BYO, whatever. B-Y-O-B. 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 The reason for that is because the towns strictly regulate the number of liquor licenses that can be given out and they're the super number, expensive the number of yeah. liquor licenses are, are so small there was a restaurant recently that closed in montclair and when it when the new restaurant came in they didn't want to serve alcohol they were able to sell their liquor license for 1.2 million dollars yep Man, that's that's in in this state it's average it goes anywhere between 400,000 to 1.5 right so all of these restaurants are thinking to themselves, well, I paid a million dollars for my fucking liquor license. And these guys are serving food. So I understand I'm not that. Serving it. I'm not saying I agree with it, but I kind of understand where they're coming from. It's I, a loophole. I, I get can't their those, point. 
yeah, I get their it. point. But here's the thing with breweries. They already have such strict laws. Now in New Jersey, they can't be open Monday, Tuesday. They can right. uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. As far as I believe the laws, they can't be open Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. They can only be open Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then they have to be closed by 10. They can't be open past 10. Three, they can only serve the products that they make. So Correct. you're not going to go to the Dark City Brewery, the Demented Brewery, the Asbury Park Brewery and get a shock top or get something like off tap like that. You're only you're going there for a specific reason and it's to try their product. Right. And they already have so many strict laws to make them not like bars. Now, the other part of this legislation that that they're implementing here in New Jersey is that they can only have 25 events at their business a year and they have to be they have to go now through a government approved process like they have to yeah. file for the event. That so part is insane. My favorite brewery every de- uh, every Friday night does a local music night. It's usually some acoustic acts or a three piece act, real small. They start at like seven and they're done by ten. And it's just the local people around the place. It's not big bands or anything, but it's something to drive people to come. Hey, because they're off the beaten path from all the bars in Asbury Park, and the, you know it's it's a way to drive business then there's days they do food trucks where the food trucks will come in the parking lot and you can eat out there and picnic out there but if you want to come in and grab a beer you can come in and grab a beer i think because they said they're going to stop that food truck stuff too they're going to stop the food truck stuff you have to you go from being able to which, have which hold on you're only open, i don't understand you're only open how four out of the seven days of the week you're only open four out of the seven days a week on a strict time limit and you're doing everything you can to grow your business besides make that product and now you're being limited even more how can they tell you not to have food trucks it's because it's, you need a, because you need a permit in order to have a food truck and that's going to count if you if you get through all the red tape that's going to count for one of your 25 events so now you're only going to be able to have two you events two a month two a month so wait a food truck i i know you need a permit to to have a food truck but you need to have permission to set up where at, at whatever location you're at as well oh, yes oh, so if you oh, yeah. so, Let's say you're running a street fair and you want to have a bunch of food trucks. Right. The person who's running the street fair has to get the right permits to allow a food truck to operate at that street fair. Now, so, most street fairs don't have a problem getting that, right? It's They have them. They're, they're they everywhere. file the paperwork and boom, it's there. And boom, it's done. So it's not like a guy on the side of a highway that has the hot dog truck uh, right. to do that. So if you got a permit to, to operate a food truck, you can't just drive it around and set up at places to sell it. You have to get permission. Where, so you have to have the permit to do the food and then a permit to for a location to stop at to sell the food. Um, it depends. If it's a bar slash restaurant, you just have to get the business's approval because they already have a license to to offer food. So right. as long as the food truck has uh, its permit. Oh, and that's so where like, they're screwing them. Okay. Yeah, so like the Brighton Bar near me has its own food truck. I had a show there. I brought another food truck. Everyone had their permit, so everyone – well, they weren't okay with it because it was a, a different like brand, but um, it was real simple to get through any kind of red tape. The brewery near me wanted to have a food truck day, and the amount of red tape and permits and everything they needed to file was amazingly long and difficult for them. Yeah. And so, that's them being able to do it now. Like now it's going to be even more difficult because it has to be like, – the event. you say you plan this whole entire event – and the and the town or not really the town. It's the government goes now. No, no, no. It's it's but there's a lobby. You know, there's like there's like oh, a yeah. lobby in in New Jersey. Yeah, and that's the one that's funding and, this oh, legislation and no, was all backing Murphy and crap. Not to yeah. get political, but <laughs> but that's just what it, it's it's. I just I don't see. There's already rules in place to differ breweries from businesses like restaurants and bars, and I think it's more than fair. And now that they're just putting even more on it that it, it's telling you that you can't promote or do anything to drive business to you that you would normally do at a bar or a restaurant. Giddles, what were you going to say? Oh, no, I was just going to say, like, it's just it's just weird to me because if you can't serve food at the place – why can't you have takeout menus that's going to go to the restaurants that are complaining about their lack of business? You know what I mean? Like, why don't they have a delivery? Why aren't these restaurants stepping up and be like, you know, we'll deliver to your brewery. We'll do this as a way. Because from like what I like when I said when I was reading that article, it, a lot of it seemed like it was business owners who were mad because their brick and mortar stores are losing out to other things. Matt, and I'll tell you why, because food please. drives you there, Matt. I was going to say because most of the places that are delivering to these breweries are not places that are serving. It's pizza joints. 
It's sub shops. But then, like, but then what you do is like you go around. It's not like it's not like TGI Fridays. Yeah, but then you like you well, TGI Fridays isn't a local business. It's a it's a national chain that happens to be in a local neighborhood. Well, you know what I mean, though. Yeah, but like, then why not have the breweries go out and be like, you're allowed to have these menus, but the catch is you have to get it from local businesses in the neighborhood. Like, how about that as like a compromise? You know what I mean? Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. Cause I, I have a cousin who has like a restaurant out in Huntington, and like we had the same thing going on here in New York, but it was more of like restaurants versus food trucks. And the whole argument was like, well, I spent all this money, and like it's not fair to me that these people can just like show up in a truck and just sell things and not have to worry about like the stuff that I have to worry about with a brick and mortar place. And to me, I'm like, well, that's just what you did. Like, that's this is the evolution of food. Like, this is the way things are going now. So it's either like you adapt and like move into this new future of like yeah breweries are gonna have this people are gonna want this or like your business is just gonna die eventually you know i don't know it's just it's weird to me because i i feel like the problem is that the places that you're talking about that they partner with are not places that traditionally offer delivery but then why not offer it like why not change up your business plan to be like this is what people want and like fix it but then who gets hurt, though? But then the small pizzeria and the small sandwich shops can't hurt. See, so what this is, is this is a brewery and another small business that is that has some sort of symbiotic relationship that is now affecting a much larger business that doesn't want to play. And so the larger business is playing stompy foot and using its political power to essentially hurt the other two businesses. Yeah, because this, hurts, this hurts the this hurts the pizza shops, too. This kind of legislation. Oh, yeah, no, it definitely does. But I just don't see why, like, the pizza shops, like, and the sandwich shops wouldn't team up with the breweries and be like, yeah, we'll give you, like, specific brewery deals. I guess it's, it's like, me forward thinking as a person who wants to open, like, a food shop of being like, I would partner with these people and try and go into this. Like, you're not, but you're not listening to what I'm saying. I think those, I think some of those pizza shops probably do do that. They probably offer some places a discount or something like that. But it's not the pizza shop that's, that's fighting this. It's the it's 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 Patty O'Malley's or, or do, do you know what I mean? It's crying. Yeah, it's, yeah like it's those types of that's places. the thing. Like these bars, like you just said, say it's an Irish pub down the street. They don't want to deliver to this place a block over because, yeah, so they'll make the minimum food cost. You know, they don't they're going to make more money if you go to their bar, sit there, have two beers and have the meal because they'll make more money on the liquor. And. And you'll you'll be spending time in there if they have a pool table, if they have a beer special, you'll spend time there. If you deliver food to it to the brewery, you're going to spend more time at the brewery and you're going to spend more money at the brewery. So, you know, the three dollar hot dog or the three dollar piece of chicken and that they made four dollars on. That's all they get is the four dollars while the brewery's making all the money on the beer that they're making and not costing them much. They uh. want you to go to their business and spend the money instead of. Because if first of all, I love the brewery near me. I, if I could live at the Asbury Park Brewery, I would. I mean, but, you can. Uh, no, they told me I can. I asked. Oh. But my point, my point being is like, if it's a Friday night at seven o'clock, I rather go there and and be there for the two or three hours that they're open before they close, before going to a regular crowded bar because I know that's what it's going to wind up being later on is a crowded place. So now they're kind of like forcing me if I'm hungry, I can't go there. I guess for me, it's just like it's just different because a lot of the bars that are around me, like 90 percent over 90 percent of the bars that are near me don't serve any kind of food other than like potato chips. So like would they every single bar has like different pop up nights on every night of the week. So I guess for me, it's just different. because like I don't think of going to a bar and getting food. I think of going to a bar to drink. And then if you want to eat and drink, you go to like a restaurant slash pub. See, those I, bars are even more pissed off because they pay for the liquor license where the breweries just sell in their own product and they don't have to pay the one point two. Right. Like I can think of two bars off the top of my head. One of them serves no food at all, except for they have a couple of like bar pies that they put out that are just free if you're there. Yeah. And there's another place that I can think of that allows you to order food in. But almost every other bar that I've been to has some sort of food menu. Now, oh, it yeah, might, it's very different here. It might just be bar food. It might just be pizza, wings, chicken fingers and a burger like that might be the extent of the menu. But they have something. There are very few bars by me that I've been to, at least in recent history, that have no food at all. 
Oh yeah, I guess that it's just I guess it's just different bar situations then because it's just it's just very different over where I live. Where yeah, well we're we're talking Jersey, but at the same time, if it works here, it's just a matter of time before all of a sudden it creeps into Brooklyn and it creeps into Long Island. Well, that's my concern because I have lots of friends who have breweries on Long Island, and I see them advertising like all the times, like Food Truck Fridays, and you know we're doing painting night at the brewery on Wednesdays, and we're doing nope. this tasting on this day, and we're doing like every night of the week they have activities. Also, you yeah, have to remember it's all gonna be gone. Also, you have to remember, Trevor, that if anything does come over from you know into new york new york city runs different than the rest of the state and brooklyn is part of new york city even though it, they're worlds apart from manhattan yeah, like whatever man yeah whatever manhattan i mean culturally <laughs> whatever manhattan does um is going to fall suit to brooklyn and queens so if they if they do that kind of uh, restriction on there it's because new manhattan's all bars there's no real breweries there's like uh, maybe one or two beer gardens actually in there um, the brewery stuff is become more of a Brooklyn staple. You know, it started with Brooklyn Lager, and then a few others all popped up, and it's a thriving industry out there. But because, you know, what may be the restrictions for Manhattan it, are going to have to be applied to Brooklyn because it's technically all part New, uh, part of New York City. Yeah. Yeah. It's just... I mean, uh, I'm a, I, I, it just, I think it can go out of control very quickly because it, it could ruin a lot of people. You know, in a lot of businesses. Yeah, because even the brewery I go to in Bridgewood here, like, they sell food and they still have menus in case you want to take out. Like, it's crazy. So. Matt, what were you And I did, I did hit a child with a beanbag playing cornhole, so it was funny. <laughs> totally no, worth I it. Was say, it. It's going to affect New Jersey breweries a lot. New Jersey actually has a pretty good brewery scene, so it, it kind of sucks. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, let's take a break. When we come back, we've got some uh, television and movie updates that new X-Men trailer dropped last night for X-Men Dark Phoenix. Ugh. I want to discuss that uh, a little bit and then some video game updates and, uh, and then that'll be it for this week. So we'll take a break. We'll be right back. It's Eric Nagel with Eric Matt and Giddles. Back right after this. It's Eric Nagel. Follow the show on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, and Facebook. At It's Eric Nagel. Hey, it's Karen Gillan here, and you are listening to It's Eric Nagel. Welcome back to It's Eric Nagel. That is me, Matt OG, Giddles, and Trevor, all in the Upside Down for this particular program. Hello, gentlemen. Looking at the box Hi. office from this past week, number one, uh, the oddly titled The House with a Clock in Its Walls, coming in at $26.85 million. That could be my house. It could be anybody's house. Actually, uh, it's not. I don't have a clock. <laughs> uh, but it looks like another <laughs> another success story for Jack Black. Whether you love him or hate him, that's up to you. Uh, number two, A Simple Favor, coming in at 10.4. Number three, The Nun, Giddle's favorite movie. Number four, Ugh. The Predator. Uh, by the way, it, The Bigger Predator is a female. And just a spoiler there for you. Uh, oh, and then number five really? is oh. Crazy Rich Asians, which doesn't seem to die. It's still holding its own in, on the box office there. And then, uh, actually, you know what? Number six, I kind of want to see right, uh, White Boy Rick. That trailer did look pretty good. The thing is, the trailer looked good, but I feel like I saw the entire movie in that trailer. I, I thought so, too. I was like, this is telling a bit much, but I'll still give it I a mean, chance. I'll wait for it to be on demand. I don't think I'm going to go in the theater and see it. Next week's huge, though. Not this Friday. The next week, you got Venom and A Star Is Born and Old Man and a Gun. I don't is know. Is that which all one, one movie? No, Venom. No. A Star Is Born. Hashtag Old Man with a Gun. Yeah. Old Man and Old Man with a Gun. Venom. A Star Is Born. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, it's like a. It's an off Broadway production. Freak. Yeah, it's like if Venom was a Deadpool movie. <laughs> Just all jokes. Uh, I think, I think finally, though, like at the whole month of December was a huge disappointment for movies and moviegoers to alike. I mean, Predator did terrible in comparison. See, this is what happened when Trevor takes the lead. He gets things wrong. The whole month of December. I Did I say December? Yeah, I burped said, halfway through. You said December, but you said it like December. Like you said it like yo. kind of a space. I was like, yo, dis like or you were dissed. That's that's like some guys somebody's been on the world star hip hop side too much. Yo, yeah. man, it's December. Best of rap battles. Yo, we should do that December where we just make fun of each other for every show in December. I'm I'm all about it. You have It'll no be idea. like this show just in December. Uh, opening this weekend. I yeah, I don't really see anything that 
that is worth our time. I don't know. So what it's been opening in more theaters. I don't know what Hellfest is. Hellfest wah, is a, a a horror slasher movie about people who go to a haunted house and then get slashed. I heard it's actually pretty good. Okay. They said it was a good throwback to like late nineties, uh, early nineties slasher movies. So I'm I'm interested. Any horror I'm interested in. All right. Then there's uh, Kevin Hart's movie Night School. That looks terrible. Yeah, that that does. And then uh, I don't know what this movie is. Smallfoot. Oh, it's uh, Bigfoot's cousin. Uh, oh no, it's an animated movie. Oh, I think it's the same people that made like Ice Age. And, and yeah, I think it. it's like a Bigfoot thing, and it's just like he's Smallfoot because he's not big yet. Uh, during the week of New York Comic Con, like Trevor said, A Star Is Born, Venom, uh, the what, and then two smaller movies. I don't know what the but, hate but you give it. A movie I talked about last week is getting opened up in more theaters now because it's become a rampaging success, and that is Mandy. Oh, I thought you were gonna say Rampage. Oh, I wish. <laughs> You're still I thought it was its week. It's, it's this. This is their week, right, Giddles? <laughs> yeah, this is their week. No, it's this week. It's Mandy. Like I keep seeing more and more theaters are adding it because of the demand. And it's on so, demand too, right? You can watch it at home. It's on demand. You can watch it at home, or like if you're lucky enough to go catch it in a theater, I would highly recommend that. So okay. definitely do that. Soundtrack's worth it. All right, uh, and I still got to watch that and Corbin Nash. I promise I'll watch. Nash! it. I want to talk about with those. Uh, every time I hear, see the word uh, the name Corbin, all I think of. Uh, is um oh no that's not his name Parker Lewis can't lose was his name Corbin I don't remember do you remember that but it's show? like every time <laughs> I say Corbin Nash I think of Jack Palance in Tango and Cash where he's like Tango Cash and I want to be like Corbin Nash why won't these cops leave me alone okay Family Guy sket uh, let's see what I hear Corbin isn't that the guy from Major League Two oh yeah Corbin Burnson thank you yes. For me, yes, you're right, and I think he was on L.A. Law, one of those big dramatic '80s shows. Uh, so I got to watch those. Uh, the Joker movie, some stills and some other stuff have come out uh, te- under the guise of testing, I guess, sampling to the audience. You saw the the photo of him in in sort of the the crushed velvet reddish suit instead of his purple. And uh, the makeup was a little weird. He had the white with the red, but then he had some other stuff on him, and the hair didn't seem right. So I don't know if that's like the early stages of the Joker as he's trying to find himself and then eventually becomes, you know, the guy in purple with the green hair. I don't know, but a lot of people were 50-50 on it. Like, oh, I'll give this a chance. This seems pretty okay. And then other people like, I don't, it doesn't look exactly like the Joker or it's nothing like Heath Ledger's Joker. I don't think I'm going to like this. I'm kind of pumped for it. I kind of like it. I'll yeah. give it a chance. I mean, I try, I constantly try to give the DC stuff a chance and it's always disappointing. But I'll, I'll yeah, try but you know what? The There's just so many different types of universes now When because I've been looking into it a lot more with the Joker that I'm willing to give anything a chance. Right, but you can't start exploring. When you're going to go solo with the Joker, you got to give people what they want first. Look how awful Jared Leto's Joker was in uh, Suicide Squad, right? People who okay. are diehard fans of the Joker like even thought, like, this is garbage. You got to give them at least one. There's never been an origin story solo for the Joker. You got to give the people what they want. These diehard fans of it, give them what they want. And then you want to do alternate storylines and universe and stuff. That's fine. But you got to give them at least one of the things that they want. And DC never seems to want to do that. DC doesn't know what they they don't know what they're doing. They're, DC is literally just trying to be as successful as Marvel and have no clue how to do it. I I. From what I've been reading, they're giving up on, the, on including the cinematic universe for the for it, DC. They're now like, we're just going to go solo standalone movies and nothing's going to tie into each other. I mean, that's what they should do. Like, they should do that and, like, go back. Like, have you seen the Bumblebee trailer? Yes, I love it. Right? Like, it's like you watch that trailer and you're like, wait, why couldn't the other ones be like that? And hopefully DC will see that and be like, you know what? Maybe we should go back and start these movies I had like, dis- kind of I over had a again. I discussion because- with somebody and uh, we were talking about the Bumblebee movie. And I said, I can't believe when they showed more in that trailer where you see um, Shockwave, who was the guy who had the... Soundwave. Uh, no, Shockwave. You saw him first. He's the guy that, that has the, 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 the one eye. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's the guy that was left behind on Cybertron for when everybody else went to Earth. He was the guy who was still trying to he ran Cybertron for the Decepticon, tried to form the bridge so they could get back and forth and whatever. He Cybertron looked ex- sounds like a sex club from the AOL. But days. he looked exactly like he was supposed to be. Right. And then huh. the next jump scene 
is Soundwave. And he looks like what Soundwave is supposed to be. Yeah. Like in the in the in the Michael Bay 5 movies, the two times they showed Soundwave, one he was a satellite in space, which made no sense, and then the, I forgot what the other one was, and they didn't have the right effect on his voice. It was still the same guy who did the voice, but they didn't have the right effect on the voice. Um, I'm trying to think of the guy's name. He did Dr. Claw on Inspector Gadget as well. But uh, if you remember Soundwave from the Generation 1 cartoon, they had that processing where it was like auto-tuned but purposely putting it in the wrong direction. So it wasn't trying to fix his voice. It was going up here and then down here. Like, like down-tuning it? Yeah, it, it, was, yeah it, was, it was screwing it up on purpose, but it sounded awesome and it was very unique. So when he did, he did show up in the Michael Bay movies, everyone's like, what is this garbage? That's not Soundwave. He doesn't look anything like we expected him to. He doesn't sound like what he was supposed to. And they kept changing everything. And too flashy, too, too metallic-y. Like, they, there was just too much going on that you couldn't enjoy it. So you see the, the cut in the Bumblebee trailer, and he's standing there looking at you, and then it pulls back, and he hits the button on his chest. The, the compartment opens up, and Ravage comes out as a cassette tape and turns into yeah. the dog and you're like oh my god and even the, the the when they get to earth they turn into planes but on cybertron they were those triangle spaceship looking things remember you saw a couple of them fly by and you're like they're they're doing it they got rid of michael bay and they're like let's do this the right way because people hated that transformer franchise Right? Especially by the last one when they were like Harriet Tubman's in it, and it's like oh, there's an underground railroad. It's like wait, what? Yeah, like it just got ridiculous. It's like wait, they're in medieval times, not the restaurant, but medieval times. Oh like, my god, if they were in the restaurant, it would make more that. sense. Some guy yeah, comes out trying to joust him on a horse, and he's just like, dude, I'm a fucking car you robot. You know, Jazz man. is the White Knight, but <laughs> here he's really in in medieval times, like affecting the war with England and France and. Like, yeah. you're like, what is this garbage going on? Like, it keeps getting Revisionist worse. history. But when they brought this this Bumblebee trailer uh, in, and you're watching it, and like, oh, everything is how it should be. Starscream looks, when he's fighting with Bumblebee, he looks, you know, dead on. The projection of Optimus Prime makes him look like the 80s version, you know, the truck. And, the, like, I, I was talking to somebody, and they're like, well, you know this is a prequel. I go, yeah, but you know it's a no prequel shit. that's going to lead to the elimination of the other five movies. And they're like, no, those will still come. I'm like, no, they won't. This is a prequel. They're re starting over yeah. that saying Bumblebee was the first one to Earth. And now they're all coming in, and then it's going to retell the story. Not that bullshit Michael Bay movie. No, even those stories yeah. didn't make any sense compared to what it was. I said, they're going to do it this way, and then prequel and then start over which eventually this will become the first movie those other five will be an alternate version but yeah they're i mean finally i think that's, that's exactly it. what's gonna happen and i think it's gonna be good because like i'm gonna i'm not gonna lie i didn't have any interest in the bumblebee movie until i saw everyone online being like holy shit that trailer was good and i was like was it and then i watched it, i was like mm, it was pretty good so i think if wrapping it all back to where we started if the DC universe does that and goes back and picks a character and says, Hey, like, let's do this as a starting point. Like when they started with Iron Man, they had like so much set up and look like in all the character development, like they just need to find that Iron Man, the DC universe to start with and then have the future planned out. And I think they can fix it. I mean, as I, as DC, I've said before, DC's like they fucked, they fucked up by not doing Batman versus Wesley Willis. Because Wesley Willis whooped Batman's ass, if you remember. <laughs> like, I mean, Batman beat the hell out of him and knocked him to the ground. But then he got back up and knocked him to the ground because Batman was being a jack-off. And, you know, they could have had Batman 2 with Superman and they team up to take down Wesley Willis. They didn't do that either. Yeah, but is it, too, is it too late at this point? It's yes. never too late because they're rebooting it. Fuck, Wesley Wells could be Batman. He could just be beating himself up. I'd watch that shit. I am Batman! Oh, Chicken damn. cow. <laughs> oh, love Wesley so good. Willis. There's that's so far removed now. There are generations that don't know the greatness of Wesley Willis now. I had to introduce my coworker to both Wesley Willis and the kids of Whitney High the other day because he's never heard of either. Right. Googling Wes Wesley. Do you not know who Wesley Willis is? Snipes. Oh my God. Well, Trevor, suck a cheetah's dick if you don't know who fucking Willis <laughs> Wills is. Blockbuster. Wow, what a difference. Wheaties, breakfast the champion. KFC, finger licking good. 
<laughs> McDonald's is the place to rock. Bounty. They have quarter pounders. They will put pounds on you. Bounty, the quicker picker upper. Yes. But I mean Rock that's over how London, they- rock on Chicago. Wheaties. What are you doing, Trevor? Nothing. Homework. Uh, all right, so the Joker movie, um, the other big Nuck. movie news. Well, there's two other big movie news uh, to, to focus on. One, today they released a photo of Tom Hanks as Mr. Rogers for yeah. an upcoming biopic on Mr. Rogers. Now, this is not to be confused with the Mr. Rogers documentary that came out. I think it's called Won't You Be My Neighbor, which is was in theaters for a limited run and is currently available uh, on demand, iTunes, anywhere you, you can get movies, you can get it now. It's really good, and I do highly recommend you watch that one. But now there's an, an unnamed biopic coming out, and it's Tom Hanks in the red sweater and the blue pants sitting on the uh, the doorway of a, of his trailer on the movie set. He looks like Mr. Rogers, like dead on. I mean, I would hope so. There's... T- Trevor, there's times when people are, are in biopics and they don't look like the, they they sort of resemble, but they don't. It's not spot on. It's really eerie how Tom Hanks looks like Mister Rogers. Yeah, no, this he's this is actually kind of. It, he had to lose. A, it looks like he lost a lot of weight for this. He probably but, had to. He, he looks. He looks exactly like if he was walking down the street, I'd be like, Mister Rogers is alive. Zombie Rogers. <laughs> Be my neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> But that looks his only cool. his only neighbor is a volleyball. That looks pretty cool. <laughs> um, that is very funny too. <laughs> Time to make believe bullshit. Time uh, to make believe. Oh look, my family and friends are here to rescue me. And then it turns out he's still on the island. There was no Mister Rogers. It was a daydream fever dream. Land to make believe was uh, in his basement. The train just went downstairs, and he's like puppets brains. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the other thing that uh, kind of shocked people was uh, last night, out of nowhere, uh, Fox dropped the trailer for X Men's Dark Phoenix, which had been rumored for a while. Like the, we were waiting for when is this going to be released? We knew they were working on it, but there wasn't a whole lot of details about it. And then there was rumor yesterday that the trailer's going to drop. Trailer's going to drop. So I'm waiting, and I'm thinking, all right, well, all night it hasn't dropped, and if they're going to do it, they'll probably do it at midnight. And then midnight came, and it didn't drop. So. I kind of gave up, <coughs> but forgot about midnight on the West Coast, which is 3 a.m. on the East Coast, and that's when they dropped it. And <laughs> I watched the trailer, and I, I got to give it some more time because I, right now I'm not impressed. It seems very weak. If you don't know what Dark Phoenix is, it's um, as far as the X-Men goes, there's a character named Jean Grey who has uh, incredible psychic abilities. She's one of the strongest characters in the Marvel Universe when she becomes Dark Phoenix. And uh, Dark Phoenix has this in- incredible power, uh, multiple uh, powers that she could do almost anything. Like she's, She can be a huge problem for, uh, for anybody, good and bad. And you're watching this whole thing there and, and you're seeing the, what's her name? Sophie Turner from Game of Thrones is playing okay. young Jean Grey. And you, you, they're they're going towards the Dark Phoenix story, but they're still she's still Jean Grey. Like the trailer doesn't show you a whole lot. And the movie really is going to have to step it up to show the whole transformation of her going ballistic. You know, she looks like she's always surrounded by fire because of, of her new of what she develops into. And uh, this trailer just seemed very lackluster. I, I haven't I, seen it. It it just it shows her like always having the phoenix power where I thought she more or less developed it. I mean, I I could be wrong on that, and that the whole reason why you know she really starts to lose control is because of Professor X. So uh, well, yeah, I don't know. That is that is part of that is part of it. He's trying to protect. Well, that's a lot of the stuff with with Charles Xavier. He's trying to protect people that he cares about because he has a uh, like a brother sister relationship with Jean, and. As the story will develop, you'll find out that, you know, it, it, it all goes by the wayside, but you don't know exactly what it was that Charles did to to uh, to kick this thing into high gear with with Dark Phoenix. But it, it does say in the trailers like this is your fault. Uh, this is your fault. You need to fix it. Yeah, because I and the thing is, though, I think the trailer shows what he did. I don't know if we want to I, spoil I, it. I got to give uh, I got to give it some more time there and, and review it again. I watched it twice. But I, I think I got to really study it before I can make more 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it. I. I, I think I know the whole reason why she goes ballistic and gets angry just from watching the trailer. I don't know. There's been so many different X-Men movies, and I understand going back and forth. Some of it was a race because of A and B and C, but, um, I mean, we've kind of seen the Dark Phoenix before. I, I don't know. I'm not – it didn't wow me. Like, oh, my God, I can't wait to see it. This, this is going to be bananas. Right. Uh, moving over to television, I'll run through the updates pretty quick. Uh, like we said – October 7th, which is going to be next Sunday, will be the global premiere of the new 13th Doctor, the 11th season of, of the modern era for Doctor Who. That same day will be the start of Rick's final episodes for The Walking Dead on AMC. So, you, you know, if you're a Walking Dead fan still, you're going to watch that. South Park just returned the other day for season 22, which uh, was on September 26th. You should watch that. And usually their seasons are like 13 episodes, 12 episodes, and they do six at a time, take some time off, and then they come back and do the other six. Hashtag cancel South Park. Correct. Murphy Brown returned to CBS this week. Why? I don't know exactly why a lot of things return. I don't know. Um, I don't remember. I, Mur Murphy Brown was an early, late 80s, early 90s show that... I watched a lot of television, but I, I missed that. That was for, like, my parents' generation or, or what have you. And I don't think it was that good back then. And now it's back now. And I still – it doesn't look good from the trailers and the teasers that I saw for it. Uh, also, that isn't good, Magnum P.I. was rebooted. Oh, I heard that's terrible. It's god-awful. And I think the guy who plays Magnum now was in Hostel? He was in some one of the. Uh, I'm trying to think what movie he was in. Bad Moms. No, was he really? Yeah, he was a love interest. Hmm. Okay. It was a really good movie. Anything with Mila Kunis, I'm in. I'm sorry. Mm, Magnum <laughs> Pie. Mm, Magnum mm. Pie. It's a big one. Yeah. We got sent Murphy brownies to work today with our Magnum Pie. Ugh. Uh, Jay Hernandez. Murphy brownies. Yeah, they sent Murphy brownies. Did it have like a picture oh. of her on it? Was yeah. it all douchey? Like, did it have a like a whole advertisement things? I remember I was out at the store once when they had the they're giving out like those Tracy Morgan like things for his new show. They're giving out like Tracy Morgan brownies for like whatever that show was that he had, and it was really douchey. Is it like that? Yeah, they kind of had her face in the box and it said Murphy brand like all written in. I but that to bring up your point, Eric. Not I know I know you're talking about Magnum PI, but that's the thing with all these reboots. They're, that's because I think that older generation, maybe your parents are the only ones who are still watching the cable television at eight o'clock. Probably, I think I think you're 100 percent right. Um, which is well, my my uh, my young coworker who doesn't know who Wesley Willis or Kids of Whitney High is is a huge Magnum PI fan, and for some reason he loves the original. And I was like, "Do you like the new one?" He's like, "It's fucking terrible," but my mom loves it and says it's just as good as the original. So I think you're onto something. I think it's made for people who like the original. The yeah, original, because there's like older people, watching, people who yeah. like. The if original. you watch some of those '70s to '80 crossover decade ch uh, shows like Magnum PI, it was so goofy and cornbally, but it had some kind of charm. Where like if you watch the Me Network or Antenna TV and those shows pop up. You're like, oh, look how goofy it was back then. But you could still sit and watch it, knowing what it is, knowing how it will play out, and still be okay with it. And seeing that it still had its charm with with um, Tom Selleck being Magnum P.I. And Higgins, which, by the way, is a British woman Higgins. now, is not a, a, a British, uh, a short, balding British man operative. It's not My, co my coworker was very upset about that Higgins change. Um, by the way, the guy playing Magnum right now, is, his name is Jay Hernandez. I, f I forgot he's been in a lot of shit. He's been in the Hostel movies. He was Diablo in Suicide Squad. He was he was uh, Brian. Really? He was Brian Chavez on Friday Night Lights. If you like that show, he was on Scandal, which was I know was another big show. Uh, he was Curtis on there. So the guy has an extensive history of uh, of of a lot of work here. But uh, I just don't think making him. Man, what a way to ruin know. his was, career! Was it was it a case of just? Well, let's put a Spanish guy in there because the, the role was a white guy and we need to change it. It can't be like it was. Is, is it that the case? I mean, I'm not, I'm not doubting that this guy's not a good actor. He's been in a lot of things. But just the change, when you think Magnum P.I., you thought of Tom Selleck in the Hawaiian shirt with the mustache and the, what was it, Detroit Tigers hat that he wore while driving a Ferrari? Like he was just yeah. this goofball guy. 
uh, who was a private eye. But they're putting the, the the Hispanic actor in there. Was that a move just because, well, you know, we need to change it. Let's just put a Spanish guy in there or a black guy in there or something like that. No idea. All right. I mean, it could be. I mean, every show that's like being rebooted is kind of like changing aspects of it. Oh, so yeah. I don't know. I mean, you got to. I mean, you got to play to your markets too. Like, if their market has more people of that demographic, then yeah, play up to it. That's what you do. A good thing about the reboot is uh, they kept the theme relatively the same because that is one of the better, impactful music beds when he's driving. That's a great around. song. And then the helicopter flying through the Hawaiian mountains. It's awesome. Yeah, it's almost like it's playing right now. You hear it, right? I hear it. I started watching that Maniac show on Netflix. Oh, how is it? It's really trippy. I only saw the first episode. If you like sci-fi, I think you'll really like it. It's very strange. It's out there. It takes place in a very like Philip K. Dick world. So if you're into like that kind of sci-fi, I think you'll really dig it. It's a big uh, question of what's real, what's a reality. Uh, like, is this the, the one with Jonah Hill? Of, yeah, it's the one with Jonah Hill and Emma Stone. Right. Yeah. Okay. And he and he. Uh, it's not a spoiler. It's the premise. It's a, he's a guy who suffered a major psychotic break, and he's trying to get like reacclimated into society. And uh, he's got a court case he has to go to, and He's telling people that he's okay, but he's still interacting with people that aren't real. So a lot of the show is like, is that a real person he's talking to? Or is that his imagination who he's talking to? And then it's like very technicolory with like the lights. And it's just, it's really cool. It's very stylized. Um, I'm excited to finish it, even though I've only started the first episode. Right. Um, it's definitely out there. If you like sci-fi, like weird stuff, uh, check it out. Uh I do want to check that out. I think I added that to my list. Thank you for blowing your nose as the big closer for that. Uh, BoJack Horseman Season 5 showed up. Um, I'm about halfway through that. It's not as depressing as it, as the previous seasons. I mean, the show is so dark. Uh, but there's some really weird, funny stuff in there. Oh, there's one episode, Gittles, you'll love it. His, uh, his father, a little bit of a spoiler, his father passed away, and he has to give sort of a eulogy at the funeral home. And the whole, the majority of the whole episode is just him standing there in front of the podium, just doing a one man thing. The whole, oh no, yeah, it goes in some really weird directions, and the payoff is amazing. Okay, so, uh, I won't give any more than that. But you, I thought of you when this was going on. I thought it was just cutting some jokes. I'm like, wait, he's been doing this ten minutes. Oh, this is going to go on for the whole thing. This is going to be the episode. <laughs> yeah, this is the game. and this is the what episode. he's doing, and it's just him talking. Like nobody's in, nobody's there. You know when people. Talk, uh, uh, talk out thoughts and ideas. This is what he's doing in front of people at the funeral home. I'm like this is not stopping. This is just going to keep going. Yeah. Uh, so definitely check that out. And finally, for um, fans of Fox Animation, this Sunday, September thirtieth, starting at eight p.m., The Simpsons return, Bob's Burgers returns, and Family Guy returns. So you want to look for that. Uh, let's go. The animation over. domination or whatever it's called. I don't think they call it that Sunday anymore. fun day. Uh, let's go to video Watching game stuff with Trevor stuff. before we get out of here. Uh, what are, what have been the updates for Fortnite? So Fortnite, I, I said last week that season five ended and season six was going to start by the time that we were talking. And they actually extended season five by a week, which actually kind of annoyed me because I was only five levels away from maxing out. I thought I was going to run out of time, and I went and I spent my uh, f money on a free game, by the way, free game, guys, um, and got the extra level so I can get the skins that I wanted, which was kind of annoying, but they also allowed you to play for one more week to enjoy some of the things that they weren't, you know, they were, they were kind of pushing some items I noticed recently. They were showing up a lot more than normal, and they nerfed, um, nerfed and vaulted a lot of things today. Season six started today. Um, there are some. What they vault? They vaulted the light machine gun. Um, okay, they, I didn't like that. Impulse grenades are now gone. Eh. Bounce pads are now gone. Eh. So once again, th those two items that were able to propel you into other people's fortresses, not take fall damage or to give you a big up on it, uh, is now gone. So building has just become way more important again, and it's all about the building. It, it's all like that's the way you're going to survive if you get into a one-on-one -on -one battle. 
is the building. There was a. Um, Didn't you tell it, me that people could walk through walls now or some shit in this new version? This new thing is too. There's a cube that you can get, and it turns you invisible. Um, <sighs> if you stand still, you will be completely invisible, and no one can see you. But it also allows you kind of glide around and fly. So you kind of have this like purple haze to you, and you can walk through walls. So if they someone starts built like if someone throws down a port of fortress, which is also new as of last week. Yeah, the port of fortresses are great. Instead of a little port of fort, which was a one by one, you they you build this giant like four by four fortress in two seconds. But now with the cube, you can fly right through it. They had some it launched today. There's some bugs they uh, that they're working on. People have been finding out that traps still can see you. So a lot of people were phasing through walls to get the people, and then the trap would still kill them. That's kind of so funny. It, it was the clips have been hilarious. But uh, <laughs> now you can you can you can fly around and go through walls and sneak up on people before it runs out. It is a timed thing. So imagine you're just walking, thinking you're farming, knocking down some trees, and then bam, there's a tomato in front of you, and a shotgun's you in the face. I'm gonna That's be a little usually awkward. how the game works for me in general, and I <laughs> see the guy coming. Like I don't want, like now it's oh shit, I just died. I got right. killed by a ghost. Now apparently too, there's also some uh, other new additions, cornfields, and some other locations. I haven't booted the game up yet today, so. I don't know if you could pick the corn. Wouldn't that be cool? Because you you can eat apples for health, you can eat mushrooms for shield, and you can eat corn. I don't know for what you could eat corn for. Uh, to make you have uh, a nice bowel movement. Like I don't know. Like <laughs> that's what I. Yeah, I didn't want to go there, but yeah. So and they also a lot of things they nerfed. They they nerfed the double barrel shotgun. So once again, the heavy shotgun is now the best shotgun in the game. I didn't like the double barrel. I feel like the heavy is better. Well, the heavy was better because you had a bigger magazine and you still had the same impact if you did a headshot as the double barrel. But it, the double barrel would do 150 damage if you got it shot on, and it was double. So it was almost an automatic kill if you were able to get both shots on the person. It was just just extremely difficult, and the reload time was way too long. So they nerfed oh, so it I'm back. just terrible at the game. That's why I hated that gun. That's what you're <laughs> basically saying. Like, if you're good and you can hit somebody with it, yeah, you'll definitely kill them. But if not, like, oh, well, you had it. you had five shots with the heavy shotgun. You only you had it. You had to get it right with a double barrel, or with the reload time, you were screwed. You're gonna you were gonna die to your po- to your opponent. So here's the lesson, Gittles. Never try. Ugh. Exactly. All right. Is that it for Fortnite? Uh, the grappler gun's also now down to only 10 instead of 15, but it's okay. Epic, I think, once again, did a fantastic job of uh, not letting the game die. I mean, people were starting to get a little excited now. There's a lot more Fallout talk happening, Red Dead talk going around. I saw around. some articles uh, the other day where they were saying, uh, get ready for the Fortnite killer, and it, I think it was for Fallout 76? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what right. they're saying, too. And then the new Call of Duty has been released, uh, and it's about Sorry, to be... Sorry, no. Uh, no, it wasn't Fallout 76. It was that Black Ops thing. So Call oh, of Duty Black oh, Ops same thing. is uh, on PC right now. It's about to hit the consoles, I think. Uh, maybe by the time you're listening to this, it might be already out. But it has a Battle Royale uh, version that a lot of people are liking. and Because um, a lot of people that like PUBG, that hated Fortnite because of the building and cartoonists are all switching over to uh, Call of Duty now because it's just way better. There's not as many bugs and it's a lot. The graphics are better. Just everything's better in that way. And a lot of Fortnite players are actually now starting to bounce back and forth because they're, they're tapping into that PUBG audience. And now Battlefield's also going to come out soon and also have a Battle Royale mode. Uh, yeah, That's what I was going to say. I don't think it'll affect Fortnite as much as it will affect PUBG because though it seems like a, a logical transition to go from PUBG over to if if yeah, the, for sure. if the Black Ops thing is as good as everybody's saying or it's hoping that it's going to be they want it more realistic than what PUBG was doing so then fine go over there that's only going to hurt PUBG i think Fortnite is just going to make it more competition for Fortnite but Fortnite has gone so far in in, in its own world it's developed characters like their dance moves, as dumb as those things are, have you know become a, a worldwide sensation. And they're just if they keep doing what they're doing, they can exist with all the people who said this is too cartoony and garbage. I want the realism. They can go side by side, but I don't. Th- they'll they'll compete with each other, but I don't think one's going to affect the other. The fact that Epic is just constantly, constantly coming up with these ideas on a weekly basis between. You know, they came up with a port of fort idea, then the port of fortress, and now with, then they made the playground mode, and then you can build now your own 
areas in playground mode, uh, they're just constantly, constantly updating that game and making it a contender no matter what. So it's going to be real interesting to see, you know, with the Christmas season coming up between Call of Duty, Battlefield, Fallout, Red Dead, um, how they're probably going to still stay a top game. Well, also, uh, now that they, they made this announcement uh, the other day that uh, PS4 is going to be getting in on the cross-platform sharing now with Switch and Xbox One, which could help uh, Fortnite as well. Because there's a lot of people I would like to play with on PS4, but I can't because Sony's always been the big hurdle there. But now that they're willing to do it, it could be a game changer. Yeah, a lot of these console players, I think they realize too, uh, like Marshmallow and like Drake and some of these guys that played on PS4 in the bigger tournaments have been looking at guys like Ninja and Tim the Tapman and Dr. Lupo who have been making a better career and living. And Those are all made up words. Yes, I made them all up. All these people that Batman, play Diddle. video games professionally that were making money, they weren't making as much money as the PC players. So a lot of the console players were switching over to PC and they were still not doing well because they're not used to the controller and the mouse and that. Totally and they were go, they were plugging in their controllers into their PCs. So with the cr- cross-platform play, it's going to bring in a whole new level of gamers versus other gamers. Well, I don't know if the cross-platform um, – I might have misspoken. I don't think the cross-platform is going to hit PCs. I think it's just still cross-platform between the consoles. Well, because- right now you could, do, you could do PC Switch, PC Xbox, but you can't – and PC Play S4 – but I don't know if PS4 is going to do the whole P- the PC thing or if they're just going to do console. Like, I don't know how that's going to work. Oh, so you don't think it could do everything? You think it's I don't know, be, I like, don't know just Xbox or just PC? No, I think it's just, it's just Xbox or Switch like for the cross-platform with Sony. I think that's what it's going to be. I'm, I might be 100% wrong, and I'm sure some viewer or listener rather will tell me I'm an asshole, but yeah. Sony already does PC, but they does not do Switch or Xbox. So okay. what I think it is is that Sony's finally going to tap into the console so it could do all. Yeah, I mean, I've played a couple of games where I'm on playing with PC players, and it's just like, it's not fair. It's a I feel like a I feel like a fish, and I feel like the guy trying to catch me is using dynamite. Like it is just not something I could possibly win. The like, only thing the that's whole, weird, like bubbles up and fish are there. That's me. Yeah, the only thing that that works out for you in that situation is you're also playing against people who are playing on their phones and their Switch. Oh my god, I love playing people on their Switch. I get in the top 10 every time because those kids are like four. Yeah. That's that's the only (laughs) chance I have. But then every once in a while they'll beat me and they'll be like, I beat you. I'm like, go fuck yourself, child. And then I'm banned. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Red Dead Redemption news uh, before we get out of here. Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 comes out at the end of the month. I think the 26th was the date. There's a new problem that's now surfacing when they're talking. They revealed about the download size for the game. So uh, what's been sort of the way to do things for video games in the last few years is to not actually buy a physical copy of the game anymore when you can just pay for the game and download it to your system. And it's in a cloud service so that if you're... Uh, Xbox or your PlayStation say it dies right and you go and buy a new one it still has a record of everything on their cloud service so you can download all your specs you can still down re-download all the games that you had and not have to worry about it well Red Dead is coming out and as the more and more trailers have been coming out they've been more and more impressive and saying this is going to be one of the best games you've ever played and all the reviews so far is like I can't believe the detail, the scenery, the the gameplay, the dialogue, everything is is racking probably five stars or, or ratings of tens or close across the board with this thing. Now they reveal, well, here's how much it's going to cost, uh, the space is going to cost you to download the game. 105 gigs, Oof. right? Big problem with that is not only just the space, one, but two, people have problems with their download size being capped by their cable companies. Ugh. So it's going to take forever to download this game because of, of uh, the cable companies. I remember because uh, you had gotten me um, GTA 5 right. and I had never played it. When I put it into the system, it was literally 60 gigs of updates so before I could even play it. Right. It took yeah. a day and a half to update. And then it finally happened. I'm like, is this even worth it? 
like oh it took so long it was so exhausting waiting because i was like even trying to play other games were slow because it was trying to download so it's like it's inhibiting your chance to play other things oh yeah because it's taking so long and slowing it down and 105 gigs is ridiculous yeah but, i mean the, the space alone on your system or if your external hard drive and like me i have it set up that if i pre-ordered a game and it comes out that day it'll start downloading at 4 a.m so when i wake up or when i'm home it's ready to go but this is so huge you know god knows how long it's gonna take and you know some people like you said the, the data caps through comcast or something around here is just you're screwed on your bill <laughs> yeah you're fucked I mean, I don't, I don't get it. Like, yeah, that's that's like way too much. I mean, yeah. I, I Ryan Shea was I, talking about how he's got to call Comcast and figure out how the hell he's going to get the game. <laughs> <laughs> that's bad. I mean, like, I'm looking forward to Red Dead Redemption Two. I didn't really play that much of one, but I feel like I'm more looking forward to Fallout seventy six because I have a lot more friends that want to play that. Like, no offense to you guys, but like, I just have a lot of friends who want to play Fallout seventy six. I'm like, I like those Fallout games, so I don't know. I think I've I only probably, played I'll one probably, Fallout game. I think it was that New Vegas. Yeah, I mean, this one is totally different than all the other Fallouts. Because all the other Fallouts, it's like literally single player. You're just playing in this giant sandbox and you have missions. This one is all online. There's no single player game. And you have to like traverse the wasteland with your friends, which is something everyone's wanted to do since the first Fallout. Trevor's new name, Traverse. <gasps> traverse! That sounds skinny. I'll take it. You should be a rapper and call yourself Traverse. Traverse the Wasteland, like Charlemagne the God. You're yeah, Traverse you the Wasteland. Oh, well, there it goes. Uh, uh, now That's I'm it. We need him, like, a picture of him as like as like the uh, the bubblehead boy, like looking over his back. Screenshot. Yeah, like that. Screenshot. Exactly. Screenshot it. You kind of look like it. Oh, I see it. Ugh, that was like Fallout seventy four. You were close. Oh. Well, if you keep this up, Trevor, you could probably get your own Funko Pop now. Oh my god, that'd be amazing! <laughs> I have a whole series, Reverend yeah. T. There you go. Yeah, for the uh, for the it's Eric Nagel Trivers. Like yeah. we don't have a cinematic universe; we just have a Trivers. Right. <laughs> you can see all the characters involved in it, and they they all have air sex. <laughs> Those are the chase We're, variants, you know. See, chase <laughs> variants. Oh, let's get the guy in the speedo with the rope around his neck. <laughs> <laughs> it was his belt. Oh, sorry, a belt. Some of us can't afford belts. We have to use a rope. <laughs> He's uh, ragging on your cord, that's, man. That's the best thing. It's going to be like I, I have Reverend T outfit. The unfortunately, Trevor's just like me being very like unfortunate. Right. And But Gittles is just a, looks like a homeless Funko Pop. I mean, that's me right now. He's got, right? He's got a rope belt, a long beard. Yeah. The, 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 the Walmart exclusive will be Gittles with a shotgun. <laughs> Walmart exclusive is be like, give Gittles a home. It's going to be me in Walmart. Like, just take me home. I'll cook a meal for you. Uh, that frying pan works. I can't wait to go pick up my copy of Red Dead Redemption. But uh, I, I thought we were going to maybe not talk about this. But looks like we kind of have to here because today has been all kinds of messed up uh, with the Kavanaugh hearings. Oh, yeah. I mean, like watching it, it felt like an, a South Park episode. Like, Dude, I like was stuck. Lindsey Graham was cursing people out. Like he lost his fucking mind. I was I was stuck watching that all day because of all the shows. Oh so my god! All the sh the the shows that were on today, I had to constantly. I'm sitting, you know, at my desk, and I have you know CNN and Fox News on, and everybody's streaming the same thing, so it didn't matter um, until they took the breaks. So I'm sitting there writing down notes and passing, you know stuff over to all the shows that were going on today and then at one point i said uh during the the recess for lunch after dr ford was b being uh interviewed i said you got to throw on fox news and i said why what, what's their take on it? i go they're the same as everybody else and <laughs> what they, and they go like what? yeah it's calm dude don't yell it's loud um, so, so it's like, like, what do you mean? I go, they're saying it's like, I don't know how they're going to get through. They sound like CNN. They sound like the other things. All the Fox, uh, correspondents oh, yeah, it, were all saying it's like, well, you know, that, that's some pretty heavy testimony. I don't know how you, you're not going to believe this. I don't know how this is going to get through. I'm like, the Fox network is even concealing to the fact that th this thing's kind of fucked up. Which explains why this second half went so crazy. 
Because if Fox News is like, yo, like we all kind of believe her, then that explains why the Republicans completely melted down during that second half. Like when he when uh, it was when bad. Kavanaugh like, get, were you to, watching that? I was like, when Kavanaugh oh went God. to do his opening statements. Right. I didn't know even know like when he's going chart and look, I understand from his point of view that, you know, he he's upset his family, like his career is probably fucking ruined his family. He's still a judge. Right. Um, but I'm saying <laughs> his reputation for his career is ruined. Um, his family's been getting death threats and all these other things. Right? So, look, I understand. Take go, remove him for a second for the things he's being alleged that he's done back in the day. The guy has a family that doesn't deserve this. Right. So the, the wife and kids and all this shit don't deserve all these attacks. So he's upset about this. So he comes out with this emotionally charged thing where a couple of things are happening. He's talking about this whole thing and he's not reading it like a like a politician would or somebody just who's not in front of the public eye would read it he's emotional like he's all over the place he's storytelling as he's telling this thing yep. right so this is going on then i'm seeing Alyssa milano rolling her eyes after everything he says and then she's Fuck tweeting sh- which i thought was in really poor form um i mean why is she there she they, they put her there like she didn't just that's what everyone was saying it's like why is she on both sides were like why is she there why is she right on his shoulder and then she kept going like this and making faces and all this and i'm like that's not cool all right but whatever she's there and i just got to the point where like i i can't take any more of this and i wrote uh my my tweet was just like this is is very intense this is all surreal i i don't know what to do about any of this like the whole thing's fucked up, and I'm just like I, I I'm I'm I, I'm full. I'm done. I hit yeah. my point. Like, I can't react anymore. When Kavanaugh came out during that his opening statement, and he was blaming this like left wing conspiracy, and he blamed Bill Clinton and Hillary. I was like, this man does not have the temperament. Like if without the rape charges, without the rape allegations, this man does not have the temperament to be a Supreme Court judge. Like he just doesn't. Like the way he's getting so emotional like that. Like. This is a job. There's been less Supreme Court judges than there's been presidents. Like, it is almost more important than being the president. The Republicans know that. They know they're about to lose big in the midterms, so they have to force him through, like, no matter what. Like, it's kind of fucked up. Somebody wrote on Twitter and said, we all have to, at least we all have to admit, this was a really weird job interview. <laughs> like, I mean, here's the thing. Like, whether or not you believe him, like, what if you were hiring a dog walker and so, and someone came up to me and was like, I would watch out for that dog walker. You know, like 30 years ago, he raped someone. You probably wouldn't even take a chance on hiring him. You'd be like, well, you know what? I'm just going to look for someone else. Right. <laughs> you know, but like. Yeah, but that's not. Gonna... That's also not. I don't know. I, agree, I, I 100% agree, but it's not right. Because you're just. The guy has been through six. FBI investigations already background checks and passed all six for but all the jobs he's ever done. So all of a sudden there's one person that said that he came out and do it. Well, now there's three. Now there's three. But it's just but, it, it just but put also a whole, like, but it also seems stretching too. that third one said something was going on. About it, but he, he was he wasn't involved, but he was present like he was at the party. It's like, does that even hold up? But, like, if you're innocent and you have somebody who is at that party who can say that you're innocent and that person doesn't want to come testify, that's kind of sketchy. But also like, the people like – but, but on the being, other hand, she had her friend and, and a few other people that um, they were calling to testify saying that he was there or, or to, to challenge his character, and they, they didn't testify either. No, but like this is different. Like he, she claimed that he was in the room and the guy, Mark Judge, his autobiography that came up, the dates and times all 100 percent match her story. So the fact that he can just write on a piece of paper, I didn't do it. And that's good enough. Like, that's not good enough for me. Like, like if he's the only person that can, can that can confirm or deny whether or not this happened and he will not come to his friend's defense, that's pretty sketchy. Like if you were accused of rape, Eric, and I was in the room and no, you didn't do it and I didn't come defend you, that would look really bad. The no more Funko for you. But but what I'm saying is like you that would look horrible, right? Oh, yeah, like, it would look horrible. Case in point, though, I have I have a lawsuit going on, right? Yep. With with my ankle. And my friend was there, and he can attest to everything that I'm saying. Yeah, but he doesn't want to go. He's like, I don't want to do that. Well, like, I don't want to go. A to shitty court. friend, then, dude. Like, oh I don't no, know he's tell he, he is no longer my friend. Believe me, uh, that's what. But, but that's what I'm saying. He, oh, there's a lot of people. Look at the 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 public. I'm not again not defending. I'm just I'm looking at the other side because I just I I do. 
I don't know. It's just all too convenient the, the for is, me like, that all of a sudden all these allegations are popping up right as he's about to go through. Well, I mean, it, doesn't it also seem weird that they're trying to get him through as fast as humanly possible where they're like, no, we don't need to do any of these checks. It doesn't matter. Let's just get him through. No. But like they did 86 Benghazi hearings, even though they said after 10, they didn't need to anymore. And if Hillary Clinton was president, they'd still be doing them. So, like, where does it end? I think Each if this side, was an Obama to that embassy petty. or a, a Bush presidency that this wouldn't be going on, I think he'd already be approved. No, I, I just think it's him. I think like, both they didn't, sides they didn't, are equally petty. No, I think each, I think both sides are equally petty, but also, like, they didn't do this to Neil Gorsuch. Like, if this is a setup, why wouldn't they do it to the first seat? Why would they wait till this seat? You know you, what I mean? Like, if they're going to set someone up. Was Neil, but, I mean, was like, Neil appointed by Trump? What's up? Was Neil appointed by Trump? Yes. Neil Gorsuch was appointed by Trump and he got bipartisan support because he wasn't a rapist. Mm. Like, that's what it comes down to. Like, and that was the seat that they stole from Obama. The, see, this is this is bad on my part because that seems so long ago. I thought that was like the tail end of Obama because Trump's only been in no, power. No, almost, no, no, you know, no, 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 no. I thought it was on the tail end of the Obama thing where he got uh, appointed. I thought so, too. Uh, my bad. No, no. Neil Gorsuch was the seat that was supposed to be Merrick Garland, who Obama nominated and the Republicans wouldn't even give him a hearing. Like they didn't even get to this point because they said no. So it's like it's really hard for me to sit here and be like, oh, it's both sides. When like uh, Mitch McConnell has literally said on videotape, my proudest moment in my life was telling Barack Obama, you will not fill that Supreme Court seat. Like that's what he said. Like Ted Cruz is on record on interviews saying like if we have to leave that seat open for eight years because the Democrats in power will obstruct like this is not like a both sides type thing like they had this whole game planned. The obstruction of Merrick Garland was their Hail Mary pass hoping that Trump would win and he won. Otherwise, right now, like we wouldn't even be having this conversation because it would – you know, they probably would have found a way to impeach Hillary. <laughs> no, I, because, I, you know what? I agree. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm ignorant to most, to most of the like, stuff. I so. mean, I follow this like pretty hardy, and like the hypocrisy of watching Republicans who legitimately blocked Obama's nominee on all fronts, saying that this is a travesty to justice, is really hard for me to get behind. Did you, you know, see the like, the headline of the Associated Press today, Eric? Or do you see that? There's been multiple headlines. Which one? The first one this morning that said today is one of those moments where you're going to ask yourself, where were you? Today's hearing ranks just as important as the Kennedy assassination, the Challenger explosion and 9-11. I don't think it ranks that highly. That was the number one headline when we woke up this That's morning. That's fine, the morning but show. headlines are also How full of shit half the time that? anyway because they're clickbait. I don't think this was one of – for right now it seems heavy, but look, looking at the Challenger explosion, 9-11 – Kennedy assassination are, Those are fixed, major events. are fixed moments in time where you're going to know where you're the you know going even earlier for our parents and grandparents the bombing of Pearl Harbor where they were when that happened. Those are the things people remember. This right now seems very important, but look back, look 20, 30 years ago when Clarence Thomas was going through this with Anita Hill, it was yeah. an important moment in history, but. It wasn't a recurring moment in history that people go, oh, yeah, I remember the Clarence Thomas thing. Unless you're oh, yeah. a big political person, the majority of the people don't even remember that thing, right? Well, it's because it was like no social media at that time, and it was just people didn't know shit. I'm just saying is the importance level of what people remember where they are based on what Trevor was just saying, where you are when this thing happened. I don't think that's going to rank up there with the other examples that you've given. I don't know. Like, I mean... This was pretty crazy, though. Like, Lindsey Graham said that they were treating Brett Kavanaugh worse than Bill Cosby. During the hearing, while he said all the Democrats were full of crap and pieces of shit. And then they had to call a 15-minute break. Wow. <clears throat> like, it was bad, dude. Like, he was screaming, yelling. He was, like, frothing at the mouth. I was just like, and then the Democrats are like, can we just ask you some questions? And every time they tried to ask a question, Kavanaugh was like, no, that didn't happen. I'm not answering this. I'm not doing that. It's like, if you're innocent, like you should be able to be like, I'm not guilty. I don't know. I saw the thing this morning, too, where they, uh, the news story where they were saying four Republican governors were petitioning the Senate to delay the vote 
the guy David Brock, who was the man who masterminded basically the Clinton impeachments from nineteen from in nineteen ninety eight, put out a statement today that said Brett Kavanaugh is the least trustworthy person I've ever met in my life. He is rabidly uh, Republican and does not listen to reason. And this was a uh, the person who impeached Bill Clinton saying that. And don't forget. Brett Kavanaugh uh, worked on uh, the impeachment of Bill Clinton. Like the thing that's crazy to me is like this all happened in 1982. So what's going to happen in like 10 years when we need another Supreme Court judge and everyone just goes online and they're like, oh, let's look at MTV spring break. And now no one's qualified. (laughs) Yeah, that's very true. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I just think there's enough questions uh, being raised that they should just withdraw the nomination. Just withdraw it. Like, I don't see what the big deal is. Like, it's a very important thing. Um, Political like, talk with Gittles. I'm reading uh, the latest New update uh, for the time that we're recording this particular program. Um, this latest update saying that uh, the Senate could confirm Brett Kavanaugh to the Supreme Court as soon as Tuesday if he clears the Judiciary Committee on Friday. Um, which is the day now the day that this is being released, but we recorded on Thursday night and uh, the majority leader Mitch McConnell is ready saying meaning that they have the votes to push him through. So, I mean, they don't but they don't know yet. I mean, they need yep. they need every vote. They do. So if Collins and Murkowski flip, then then they can't get it. Jeff Flake said he's not voting for him, but Jeff Flake always literally lives up to his name and flakes out. I just don't the thing that I don't so get it's not is just that a people, clever name. Yeah, but the thing is, it's like, and this is something that I ask a lot of conservatives, and I say, well, what do you hope to get out of Brett Kavanaugh? Like, what do you hope for? Like, what are you looking for on, like, the Supreme Court? And they're like, well, he was, you know, he's Trump's nominee. I'm like, yeah, I get that. But, like, what do you want out of him? And they can't answer that. It's just like they just want him because he's nominated by Trump. And that's, like, crazy to me. Like, he's literally said on record, like, I will overturn Roe v. Wade. Like, where are these Republicans going to get their abortions? (laughs) <laughs> so I'm trying like to see, I'm, I'm reading this thing here so that from the beginning it says they could confirm him to the Supreme the vote Court is supposed to be tomorrow morning as yeah as of Tuesday so the, I'll scroll down a little bit further so the confirmation could happen as early as Tuesday the vote because this is where I was trying to figure out when is the actual vote because I didn't think it was going to be today so they're saying tomorrow the vote morning. is tomorrow the committee has 11 Republicans 10 Democrats and has a scheduled vote on Friday morning uh, the chairman, uh, Charles uh, Grassley, a Republican Ugh. from uh, or representative from Iowa, uh, told the reporters that the meeting might be postponed depending on the outcome of Thursday's hearing. So I guess it's scheduled for tomorrow, but they could still tomorrow say we're delaying this again. Yeah, basically, it's scheduled for tomorrow morning if they know tonight that they have all the votes. Like, if they know tonight that they have all the votes, then they'll totally call in that vote tomorrow. That's why when McCain gave that big thumbs down, it was, like, a really big deal because he had told them the night before or whatever the night before that, like, he was probably going to vote for it. So when he came in and did that big thumbs down, it was a big disappointment because they had this whole thing going. They had it on TV. They're like, yeah, we're about to pass this. And then he shot it down. And everyone got really mad. So now that's like they don't do any of these uh, votes until they know 100 percent they're going to get the votes because they're tired of being embarrassed by it. Like they have all the power. Like they literally control every single branch of government. So it's really hard to be like, oh, let's blame the Democrats. Like they literally have zero power other than asking these questions of this man. Well, you know, and that's crazy to me. Well, as far as this thing, this whole thing has been going, it's been very surreal. It's been very emotionally draining and physically draining uh, for Everybody involved and, and everybody in this country that has to watch this whole thing play out. And as well, it's you're, not even like, but here's the thing it's not even about like watching it play out. It's the fact that this is going to affect our lives for 40 to 50 years. But it is watching it play out because we can't, we as the public can't vote on this. This isn't our vote. Well, yeah, I know it's bullshit. Yeah, so that's why we're saying we have to play out. This isn't like we're waiting to see who's going to be the nominee for a party and then on Tuesday we go vote and, and we determine what's yeah. going on. We have to sit here and watch this. Because yeah. this is the, the Supreme Court is a right of the president to uh, to make uh, appointments, nominees for the, uh, for these positions that have to be passed through, uh, you know, through through the Senate. They have to be approved before they can go and be on the Supreme Court, the highest law in the land. 
But none Unless of this you're in, a, a Obama nominated look, judge, in which case they'll obstruct it. When people <laughs> saying that, you know, you have a call your senators, call this and call that. OK, you do have that right and that power to do so. Right. But that's as, that's all you have in this situation. You don't have any much more than that. No, I mean, but you can you can try and vote them out like people are doing in, in Maine right now. They started a counter fundraiser against Barbara Collins. Right. So so far they've raised one point five. Yeah, yeah. What they've so far they've raised one point five million dollars, and they're like, if you vote for this, like all this money is going to your opponent. I get that for the midterms coming. That still doesn't affect the immediate situation happening now. You well, know? no, nothing is. All until- you can do is, I mean, at this point now that you're listening to it, you'll know the vote already. I mean, you know, if this all plays out the way it's supposed to. Well, you can't do anything at this particular junction, but you know when things like this come up, you can call your representatives and, and try to sway their vote to do so. Uh, yeah. But unfortunately, at this point here, it's just you're stuck here sitting watching this this uh, this drama unfold, and you're like, I, I don't know what more I can really do here. You can set, you can talk online and social media all you want. But it doesn't no, mean you can, thing. you can get yelled at yeah, and, it doesn't and mean scream anything, into the void. But it's not going to change anything either. You know. No. You actually have to do something, not just post tweets and Instagram shit and Facebook and this whole thing's a mess. But like I said, you at the time you're listening to this, the vote probably happened. And we know now what's going on, uh, not while we're recording, but we do know in, in real life. And uh, well, you know, it'll at least be another couple of weeks before if we even bother to touch this again, because next week is New York Comic Con and we're going to be focused on all of that stuff. Maybe we'll do a mini episode earlier in the week before comic-con because the you know there's just a lot to do maybe if you guys are around we'll just we'll hop on and do a short episode just to give them something for next week anyway so <laughs> by that oh, music crap. means we got to go do the plugs uh let's go to matt og matt what do you have you can find me online geek stuff og across all social media at new york comic-con next week stop by booth 1172 go to bkgeekstuff.com for new episodes of the podcast and uh, I look forward to seeing some of you guys uh, at New York Comic Con. All right, Gittles, what do you have? I got Gittle Base on the Twitter, Instagram, Xbox Live. You can, uh, you know, tweet at me all your anger at my political rants. I have no problem with that. And uh, October 21st, I am doing the first ever Brooklyn casserole takedown. So I don't know what I am going to do for a casserole. I have like some sort of ideas. I don't want to spoil anything. I gave you uh, something you could use as a secret ingredient. I used it on pork chops last night. How was it? It was pretzel It was really good. Oh, good. I mean, they literally just grind down the pretzels. That's all it is. Like, I, looked, I was, like, pouring it out. Uh, for people who don't know, it is a bag of Dots pretzel rub for uh, the uh, your food. So it's basically like a shake and bake, but it's made out of ground up Dots pretzels. Right. So I uh, coated pork chops in it and baked it, and it came out really good. Tasted just like the pretzels, but with pork in the middle. That's awesome. Yeah, so it was really good. So, yeah, maybe uh, I will find a way to incorporate some Dots pretzel dust into my casserole. Totally but if you should. want to come out, it's going to be at the uh, the Brooklyn Shuffleboard Cl- or the Royal Palm Shuffleboard Club, which is in Gowanus, Brooklyn. Right. Uh, it's October 21st. I, it's either from 12 to 2 or from 2 to 4, but I'll have that information next week. Trevor, what do you have? BTG Trevor on Twitter. I don't know enough about everything we just talked about, so please don't send me angry political tweets. I, I won't care. Podcast Dummies, episode one aired this week. Working out the bugs. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. Very good episode, though. We've been uh, broadcasting some other shows as well. But it'll be Tuesday, uh, October 2nd, around 7 o'clock. We're going live again on Twitch, twitch.tv slash podcast dummies and on Instagram at podcast dummies. Very good. For me, it's E-Rock Radio across the board on social media. But more important, the show across the board on social media. It's Eric Nagel. All one word. 651 Smithers is the phone number. 651-764-8437. Leave a message. We could use it on a future program. Uh, Next week, we'll do a mini version of the show because we're leading into New York Comic Con. Stop by booth 1172 to the Big Kev's Geek Stuff. And remember, what are you supposed to ask? You're supposed to ask for Gittles. Ask for Gittles. I've I've told so many people to do it. I can't wait. The best part is how angry everyone else is going to be. Yes. (laughs) With that being said, until the next time, everybody. Be excellent to each other. And, we'll and have seeing- a wonderful time. <laughs> we told you you don't do both <laughs> when he's here. We don't do both. And we'll be seeing you. It's Eric Nagel. And that's all the time we have. Follow the show at It's Eric Nagel on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. 
<clears throat> Unless we do something stupid or <laughs> something better comes along.